Hello and welcome to the Game Informer Show. Hello. I'm hey. Ben Hansen, joined by Kyle Hilliard. I thought you were done doing live shows for a while. Wouldn't it be nice? Yeah, we're technically live right now, but if you're <laughs> watching or listening to this later, don't worry about it. It's not really going to impact you. There'll be some chat and maybe some mishap now and then. Uh, right there, uh, Andrew Reiner. Hello. And Brian Shea. Hey. Oh, what are we covering today, Brian Shea? <sighs> Lots of stuff. His shirt. It is a hell of a shirt. That's covering me. Got pigeons on it. And we got a lot to talk about. Fox. On this episode, we're talking about Super Mario Maker 2, uh, Crash Team Racing, Nitro Field, Harry Potter, Wizards Unite, Bloodstained, Ritual of the Night, a little bit about Summer Games Done Quick, which is in Minneapolis, which is very exciting. Uh, let's see, Samurai Showdown. What a weird Wait a show. Sec. Uh, and then Judgment. Uh, Jeff Quirk will come in here. And then we're going to have some fun community emails, and then back half of the show... It's a weird week. Uh, things are a little bit panicked and rushed. So there's not going to be a third segment for this show. But to make up for it, in theory, right, Reiner? We're going to have a bonus podcast coming up yes. uh, probably early next week. Yeah. I, Leo knows better than me when it's going to air. But Tuesday. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order with Stig Osmussen. Yeah, mm. the kind of answering lingering questions thing there. So if you have any questions, is it still too late to submit questions, Leo? No. Great. There's a YouTube community post, youtube.com slash Game Informer. Otherwise, I assume there's a post on the website, too? That's right. Okay, very cool. So if you want to learn something about Jedi Fallen Order that we haven't covered yet and that Stig might answer, go submit a question in the comments there. I want to learn a lot about that game. Like what? What's your number one question? Eh, Can I have a yellow lightsaber? Yeah, (laughs) that's good. He wouldn't answer that question. (laughs) Really? That's the one? It's got to be in there. Why wouldn't they have that? It's got to be. I don't know. There's some colors. He seriously would not answer that question. Live at E3 Coliseum. (laughs) Well, that's it, there's specific colors that Lucasfilm says no to. I mean, red, obviously, for a, a Jedi. Like, that's, that's, a, that's, that's assumed. Your Jedi and KOTOR could have a red lightsaber. Yeah. And that's why KOTOR is non-canon. Yeah, not canonical, no. Oh, that's right, that's right. That's why they nuked it, yeah. That's disgusting. Uh, yeah, and we're doing it live this week. It's a little bit different, I acknowledge. Uh, Leo's monitoring chat, I presume, in there. Um, because I have, like, jury duty, and I thought this court case was going to be over by now and it's not and so it's been like oh we can record it now we can record it now okay now our only option is to do this entire podcast live but it's fun i'm excited if you talk about what's going on well then we have a chance to be a jury when you're going to jail for revealing all this information about your case and you've never been on jury Uh -uh. duty so this is your one opportunity if i just spill all these beans Yeah. yeah talk about it it does feel a little it's kind of fun because it feels a little like video game embargo e, or even you know, <laughs> we like, never deal with those. <laughs> no, but it's fun to be like, okay, seriously, you cannot talk about this. This is top secret. And I think the jurors kind of get like a thrill out of that, right? Yeah. And it's like, they're even strict about like, do not talk to your other jurors about what's happening in this case. And so people in the jury are so paranoid about it. It is like, you cannot talk about anything. I'm trying to like joke about like, what's going on with that stenographer? They will not open up on any of <laughs> there's that. There's a like, stenographer? Oh, You're going to jail. <laughs> it's fascinating. I think it's really fascinating. It's just been going on for way too long and I apologize for the weird mishap. Anyways. So naturally when you have a thing you can't talk about, you jump in front of a microphone <laughs> on a live broadcast. The <laughs> point is you can't talk about details of the case, which I fully respect and get, but at a certain point, it's a little bit silly. Everyone treats it like they're in the CAA all of a sudden. It's, it's okay. Yeah. Let us know if Ben Hansen should go to jail in the chat, please. Yeah. Oh, that's a fun interaction. <laughs> uh, so you mentioned Jedi Fallen Order podcast is going to be early next week. Mm-hmm. Also on Tuesday next week. Oh. Okay, this is the challenging part live. No one below this. We're revealing our next Game Informer cover story. Yeah. Mm. Which is... Can't say. Can't say. What's up with that stenographer? <laughs> <laughs> so Tuesday, yeah, we'll reveal that. Uh, and then next week on the podcast, we'll be sharing full impressions of whatever this mystery game is. I'd imagine that myself and one other person has a lot to say about this certain game. Mm-hmm. And Potentially. We travel the distance for it. Um, okay, Super Mario Maker 2. Let's dive into this thing. Brian sure. Shea, you've previewed this game a hell of a lot. I sure have. And Kyle Hilliard, you have reviewed the game a hell of a lot. Yeah, I've and reviewed all three at this point. One, DS, the DS port, and now Mario Maker 2, yeah. Oh, really? That's yeah. wild. Uh, uh, Reiner, what's your history with Mario Maker? Have you played much of these? Yeah, I played uh, a lot of the first one. Uh, made levels for my daughter that didn't oh, okay. have any death in them. So she just mm. would run from left to right, and she loved them. That was her first game, like she, what she cut her teeth on. That's her religion now, yeah. Death yeah. does not exist, ultimately. <laughs> <laughs> that seems all right. Uh, yeah. Kyle, how is the second game? Uh, it's really good. It's not, it's not like a reimagining or like a big change. It's more Mario Maker, but the additions that are in there are really good and worthwhile. Like the single-player campaign stuff is really substantial, and there's a lot of it. I read your review. That was the most shocking part, I guess, is that yeah. you said you were really hot on that stuff. You mentioned something about like how the undo dog is now part of the story or something. Yeah. So the, I mean, the basic story is like, 
Undo Dog accidentally destroys Peach's castle by <laughs> using the the Mario Maker tools like in the world, uh-huh. and so you have to collect coins to rebuild the castle. And basically. is it like Peach like standing on top of the rubble like Undo Dog? I mean, I like, yeah, kind of. Yeah, I don't know. I actually okay. don't know if Peach is there at the beginning, but I mean, yeah, she it is, is not. It is. Yeah, okay. It's but it's like the Toads being annoyed with uh, with Undo Dog, and then <laughs> and so and then you get to play like there's over a hundred, I think, mm-hmm. or maybe a hundred exactly of. Um, levels made by nintendo and they're all really good they're all great really? none of which were created by takashi tezuka we learned <laughs> yeah, at e3 he was, reviewed them yeah we, you posted your interview on the site and then we did that rapid fire interview with tezuka mm-hmm. the director of mario world mario 3 and all that stuff yeah. yoshi's island uh, but that was the weird part is talking to him about mario maker and he's just like ah, i've i've made enough levels yeah. <laughs> like i don't need to make any like he's the main spokesperson for this game and it seems like he has never <laughs> publicly made a he's level. He's never published a level, he said. He has made <laughs> very few. Well, with a, with a asterisk. I mean, he's published so many Mario levels up to this point, I, right? But when their entire pitch is, it's so easy to make Mario Maker levels. You can spend half an hour and make a level, don't you think? I, but <laughs> yeah, 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 I guess. But he's going to be held to a certain like standard, and he's probably going to always be constantly disappointed with whatever he's, he's paralyzed. making. paralyzed. He no. wouldn't ever say which one was his, but there was one in the 100. That would be like, that would the be way fun. to do it, that right? Yeah, yeah, fun. try and yeah. figure it out. Um, also, real quick, he also said, because we asked him like what his favorite type of level was. And well, I, liked, fa- I asked him what, straight up what his favorite level he's ever made was. That's right. And he chose the weirdest, worst answer ever, which what was is, it again? he likes the one in Mario 1 where you're running across bridges and cheap cheeps are flying up. And nobody likes that level. Everybody <laughs> hates that level. I told him straight up, I was like, that level gave me nightmares when I was a kid until the angry sun level that you created in Mario 3. <laughs> And then he just started laughing and pointing at Shay. It was really <laughs> uncomfortable for everybody in the room. Went okay. on for way too long. Do the um the hundred levels uh, yeah. better than the hundred levels that were in Mario Maker One? I feel like at yeah. a certain point, difficult random levels in Mario Maker are just going to be at a certain level of quality. I liked them more because they introduce a lot of like mechanics that have never been in Mario before. Like right. they're new to Mario, like the car, like the Koopa Troopa car. It basically turns it into like an auto run level, which I like. Mm-hmm. I've I, played Super Mario Run. Yeah, it's great. Okay. <laughs> I like Super Mario Run. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. There's the one fan. What about yeah. Rayman Run? You like that game, right? That was that bad. Yeah, Fiesta Run and all that nonsense. Yeah. Yeah, there's some, Sonic there's some Run, everybody. I played it. But yeah, I like. I, I, I really do genuinely oh, like the levels where you get in the car it's because it's like, it's a different style of Mario. It's more about like you're like in a speed run and it's like about timing and stuff like that. You're not yeah. so much it's worried super about cool. accuracy. Like, yeah. I, the thing that I took away from my time with Mario Maker 2 in New York at an event that I flew to um, was like, I can't wait to make an obstacle course for that car. Yeah, that was the first thing I did when it was my, when I like got down to making levels, like the, the couple of levels I made were all based around the car just because it's super <laughs> fun to make it like hit a bounce pad and fly across the level and hit another bounce pad over lava Weird. and stuff like that. So Kyle. If I can yeah. put on the Ben Hansen pants right now, what's mm-hmm. the deal with the Amiibos? They're not there. What the H? Yeah, that's that's good. It's not a it's big okay. Deal. Right? I, some people, no, I, I love I, those costumes. Yeah, they're they were cool. I, I but I mean like I and I have seen people commenting that they miss them like preemptively, and that that's fair. But it didn't. I mean the levels are still good and the creation tools are still good. I, I didn't find myself missing them that much because it was always aesthetic anyway. It yeah. was just like kind it's of just a, a cool thing. dumb thing. Yeah, it was a cool dumb thing for sure. So a lot of people are worried about the lack of the gamepad for the Wii U. Yeah, that was just so beautiful for making levels in the first game. Uh, but it, overall, does the teeter totter balance out between like new stuff is good? But it's a little bit crappier to control than the Wii U one. But meh, I I did miss the, having the stylus yeah. for the gamepad. Hmm. But I mean, the touch screen is fine. You know, it's it works well. I didn't. It's not like I wouldn't say it's like worse by any means. It's just different. And from my understanding, there are styluses that you can buy that are compatible with the Switch. Yeah, I mean, oh, any, really? any stylus you can use with your iPhone is going to work with it. But I mean, they're they're always that sort of smushy kind of. They're not great. You know, the, the, the Wii Wii U pad was pressure sensitive, yeah. which made it a little better for like placing blocks. But I mean, ultimately, like I I didn't I didn't miss it. Like using my finger was fine. The one thing that kind of does bug me is like you're if you're playing in handheld mode, you are forced to use the touch screen. Hmm. And That's there were occasions odd. where I would have liked to just use the buttons to create while I was in handheld mode. I know this is a classic Nintendo conundrum, but why they do that? I don't know. They just like to encourage people to play the games in the way they want them to play i guess huh which, which like raises that, do that whole a accessibility lot, yeah. question that nintendo is always like iffy about you know did right. we just hear the wii u was better than the switch for something uh, yeah for oh, creating oh, mario levels crap i think i well i don't know i don't even want to say like better it's just different like i didn't i didn't have any problem mm-hmm. making levels on the switch whether i was using um cursor on screen or using my finger it's like rayman Legends, still better on the <laughs> gamepad like that game's <laughs> awesome on the gamepad yeah, on wii u thing. yeah that's yeah, true it's a freaky yeah. thing uh, let's see. So, enjoyed it. How many levels have you created? 
Uh, I only made like two or three, and then I played a ton of uh, user created levels, and I did like I did literally everything in the in the single player campaign, like found all the secrets and everything. Really? Yeah, because I really I really enjoyed that. Part what of type there. of secrets are there? Um, so there's an overworld that you can walk around in while the the castle is being built, and yeah. you can find secrets in that area that will take you to like other levels and other characters mm. that will give you more missions and stuff like that. Hmm. That so, right. so I liked that. I liked I liked having a bunch of Mario levels, and then like having a world that you could explore as Mario and find things too. So uh, when I was at the preview event, they told me that almost everything is unlocked in the uh, the creation tools. Unlike Mario Maker One, where you have to oh, unlock yeah. the the elements as you go. Uh, without spoiling what they are, were there things that you unlocked as you played? There was like one or two minor things that you okay. unlock. Um, but they weren't, they're not substantial. Like, com- like the thing about the Wii U version was it would literally day to day give you more tools. Mm-hmm. Like when I reviewed it, it was interesting because like I actually had to change the Wii U clock to get the tools faster because I had a print deadline. I had to get it done before the normal like online review embargo, which yeah. is weird, but that's not, that's not in this one. All the tools that are available, the thing that you unlock in the single player is, I, I don't think I can say yet until the game comes out, but mm-hmm. it's not like a game changer. It doesn't like yeah. change your... Game. And there's no like so people were speculating a ton about new themes, what they're gonna add, and they added 3D World, yeah. which is f- fine. I love that game. I don't know if I'm excited about like the art palette. I like the elements though. Yeah, it's sure. more from a mechanical perspective. It's more interesting because the car is like only available right, there, and the, cat, and the the cat, the cat, <laughs> the cat is only available. <laughs> and the clear there. tubes, sure, that seems fine. But then the weird thing is they're not retrofitting that. That's like a new. Yeah. You know, new version, it, separate, so they're not making like the eight bit version of the car, eight bit version of Cat yeah. Mario, which is a bummer. I want to see that. Stuff. Yeah, if you if you make a Mario Brothers three level and then click the three um, D World template, it will wipe it clean. It gives you a warning. It says yeah. like if you switch here, you're gonna lose all <laughs> your creation progress. So you can only switch, uh, you know, around templates of the first four. If you want to make a three D World level, you have to like make it exclusively. They that can sucks. just get rid of all those. Just Super Mario World. That's all we need. <laughs> I think no, I love, I love having all the different ones. Nope. No, okay, never, never mind. use those other ones. I'll, go, I'll change I, my review. I, I feel the way about Mario 3. Like, I love the Mario 3 art palette, I think, more than any other Mario game. Like, I just... That's wrong. It's such a That's weird wrong. look. Uh, but is there the option of them adding more themes? They've been cagey about it, and now that the game's out, it turns out, yeah, no, it was just 3D World. It's kind um, of a bummer, right? I get. I don't know. I get. I guess it's a bummer. I mean, I guess it was a bummer when it was announced. I never assumed there was going to be, like, a, a secret unlockable template. Yeah. in there well, just because like why wouldn't they put that in the marketing if it was going to be in there yeah. um but as far as i mean the sky's the limit in terms of what they could add i mean they could they could add it but I, I, it from uh talking to tezuka it sounds like it's a much more substantial undertaking yeah and my I, I touched on this on the interview that i published on gameinformer.com yesterday cool. um asking about like the technical challenges of adding a theme and he seemed like it's pretty difficult like he was more adamant that it's difficult to add a new theme than he was when you asked him in Rapid Fire if we'd ever be able to like create our own overworld. Yeah, he seemed open to that. He right? was like, "I wonder." Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> and like, then, that yeah. will be in Mario Maker Three. Yeah, yeah I'm sure yeah. it'll be coming so out in two I, years. I don't see new templates coming, but I would yeah. love to be wrong. I, I there is love that to blank see space for Mario Two. Yeah, Mario Two is the one that I'd want to see. I, yeah. I'd like to see the Game Boy games. Honestly, I'm still disappointed that the 3DS game didn't have Game Boy templates. Well, especially now, it's slightly easier for them if they are making these different siloed versions and yeah. cross pollinate with everything. I guess so, but what, you say the blank space. So that was in the direct, right? That they had this well, like there's, chunk, or there's where's the that four. coming from? So there's, like, when you choose, like, all right, there's, like, a left sidebar that comes out that has, like, the four different styles from Mario Maker 1. Yeah. And it's, like, you know, Mario 1, Mario 3, Mario World, uh, M- New Super Mario Brothers U. And then there's a separate section that's, like, other or something or bonus. Well, yeah. Then and says, then there's, like, yeah. because it was two columns, there's... Uh, Mario 3D World, and there's just a blank space there. So that's why everybody was like, oh, there has to be something else that goes right. there. Yeah. But not yet. Nah, yeah, people are reading into that a lot. I think they just yeah. wanted to keep the shapes consistent. Oh, definitely. It'll just be a little ad for like Amazon or oh, something. Oh, hopefully, yeah. yeah. <laughs> DLC. Did you see any super wacky things with the objectives? Because you can make different oh, objectives yeah. now, right? That's the other reason I liked the single player stuff so much, because they really play with that a lot. Like, there's levels where you can't touch the ground. There's levels. Mm. Then there's like, like the idea is like you go off to the first jump. I think the way they phrase it is like Mario's feet cannot touch the ground once it leaves the ground. So after that first jump, like if you touch the ground, you you can't complete the level. So there's like Weird. people had le- like online and both the Nintendo levels had stuff where you had to like swing between hooks and like use the cape from Mario World to float and stuff. And I love that kind of stuff because it made it feel more like a puzzle game to a certain degree. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah. 
There's other ones where like you can like you have to defeat a certain enemy yeah. or a certain number of this certain enemy. So like you can make like a boss battle level if you want to, or like all you have to do is beat Bowser and like the level's over. Yeah, huh. I really like that stuff. That, that seems cool. sweet. Yeah. And the final verdict is eight seven five. Eight seven five. Super Mario Maker two. Pretty cool. good. Are you gonna make a lot of levels again, Shay? Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. Hundred no percent. You don't. You didn't get it all out of your system with the first one. <laughs> no. No. Actually, I've been wanting. Like I. That's one of the main reasons I kept my Wii U out for as long as I did because I love just fiddling around in that yeah. stuff. I mean, Reiner, where's your Wii U, Reiner? Uh, in a closet. You really? You, you packaged it up? Oh, yeah. That thing's long. long Mine's gone. in storage. It's never coming out again. Uh, I still have mine out, but I don't really know why. I guess I like Nintendo Land. Mario Chase is yeah. still fun. Everyone's oh, yeah. I still play Mario Chase. 3D World is awesome. And 3D World, yeah, you're right. It's still one of the best. I need to put that on Switch immediately. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure it'll be coming at some yeah. point. I mean, one quick final note about Mario. Like, I'm super excited for like the game after Friday because of the Switch player base is so much bigger mm -hmm. like i'm optimistic that there's just going to be way more stuff to explore i feel like we also said the same thing with mario 3ds right and i mean was the 3ds well, the pool of levels like that well that's the thing the 3ds one you couldn't share levels online are you serious i'm serious yeah oh that nintendo yeah <laughs> it was dumb like that was like the big thing about the review that i wrote it was just like what what's going on oh here? my god <laughs> that's like I the main reason knew that. yeah that's insane. you could only play you could find you could play some of the best wii u levels on the yeah. 3ds but you couldn't <laughs> upload levels it was dumb so speaking of like level creation tools uh just real quick link's awakening they have the, oh, yeah. the dungeon creation and it's very much it's very different from the mario maker thing is that like you're just arranging tiles of dungeons you already beat yeah but i asked aonuma at e3 will you be able to share these online and he was like, I can only talk about what I talked about on the Treehouse presentation. <laughs> Maybe next time I'll be able to present to you a little bit more. And he laughed. So I think that we're going to be able to share them online. That'd be nice. And my he speculation. Reading, he was reading that phrase right yeah, behind much. your head. <laughs> yeah, they had it on the wall. There's no doubt. And just to be clear, Kyle, the best part of Mario Maker 2 is what new feature? The car. The Koopa Troopa car. <laughs> Which reminds me, you know what's fun is being a lovable... Uh, platform mascot oh, racing man. around in a car. What a segue. Here we go. Crash Team Racing, Reiner. Yeah. Hey. Uh. <laughs> uh, beloved game. Uh huh. Just great. Uh, they decided to remaster it. A lot of people were speculating it might be DLC or something for the Insane Trilogy remaster that came out. Is that two years ago at this point? Yeah. 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 But now it's standalone thing. And is it 60 bucks? No, it's 29, 39, something like that. Okay. It's a reduced price. Yeah. How is it? It's good. It's, uh, I mean, it was originally made by Naughty Dog uh, back in 99, I think. Yeah. Uh, and I liked that game more back in the day than Mario 60, Mario Kart 64. What? <gasps> because oh. the mechanics are, you're so active on the track. And one of the things it does that's different, like a lot of the game is built on the Mario formula, right? Mm -hmm. You're power sliding around corners, getting weapons, you know, launching rockets, dropping mines, stuff like that to try to get a better place. Like, that is the kart racing formula. Yeah. But what this game does is there's this very active turbo system. So anytime you come up on an incline, you want to jump to try to get more air. If you, cart, if you get enough air, your kart lands, you get a turbo boost. If you're sliding around corners, it's almost like a rhythmic mini game where you're holding the power slide, but you're also timing another button press to get turbos and you can do three in a row so as you're sliding you're like turbo 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 but it kind of becomes a game of like uh of chance where it's like okay should i go for that third turbo boost which is significant yeah or should i pull out of it because i might hit this corner then right like i might hit the wall uh so that you're constantly going around the track even on on straightaways if it's wide enough you're kind of sliding on it and turboing. Yeah. Um, and that's all in the original too, right? Yeah. Okay. And then the AI is very aggressive too. And it's not like in a rubber banding type of way. Like there's a little bit of that, but they're just really good at turboing as well and using the mechanics of the game itself. Yeah, so the if Coco you get out, doesn't mess around. Yeah. If you get way out in advance or way out in front of the, uh, the, the pack, they're not going to be right behind you. And the game's really good about giving you weapons to defend yourself then or items to defend yourself. Right. Uh, or, you know, place things to knock them back further. So I, I think just mechanically, it's a really solid racing experience. And that holds up well today. Like, nice. it, it's still really fun to play. Hmm. Um, Binox did a great job of just like the Crash Team or the, the Crash Trilogy and the Spiral Trilogy of just like making it look new again. Like, it, it has modern visuals and it, very fluid you know there's never a moment of slowdown that i experienced and um there was a trilogy of kart racing games 
So they could have done this as a trilogy pack. People don't like to acknowledge the second tier. That's the weird area. Right. But, but those games are recognized in this. Really? So, uh, in the campaign, there's a nitro-fueled campaign variation where you're bringing in characters from uh, Nitro Kart, the second game. Okay. So those are just available for you to unlock if hmm. you want in races them. They're all... They're lame. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> They're not as good as the characters that are they from created. like PS2 era like crash characters. Yeah. And then I couldn't name one. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh the third the third game, Tag Team Racing, will be uh, oh, there's Nitro Kart tracks as well that are separate from the campaign that you could just do for different challenges and battle and all that That's stuff. That's cool. There's like fifteen more. Okay. Uh it's kinda half ass though, you know, half assed <laughs> in where it's just not like a, a part of the campaign or, you know, they didn't recreate that element. They're just there. Uh, and then the third game, Tag Team Racing, will have DLC, free DLC, that'll be coming later. Hmm. Uh, more tracks again. Because I'm trying to remember, one of those other kart racing games, they had that weird mechanic, which I actually liked a lot, where you could like fuse with another kart, and then whoever detached from the fusion first got a boost. Yeah. So you could partner with anybody on the track, and there's this weird thing of like who's going to screw the other person over first, and like especially when you get near the finish line, it's like, all right, see ya, I'm going out first. <laughs> I doubt that will be in okay in this game, but yeah, who knows? We'll see what the DLC brings. Beanox has really found their their groove with these. Like they used to like. Well, I think well this is like, the first one they've done. The yeah. Oh, really? Oh, I thought it was the. I thought they worked no, the other ones Vicarious too. No, Vicarious Visions oh, first okay. for Crash, and then Spyro's Toys for Bob. It's basically all those Activision <laughs> studios that you don't learn a lot about, right? It's yeah. kind of the under the radar Activision studios. They're now getting their chance to do these. Used to work on masters. Guitar Hero. And yeah, all. basically. <laughs> yeah. For Toys for Bob. There's still a handful of games for both Crash and Spyro from that era that they could bring back that wasn't done by. Naughty Dog or Insomniac. Right. I hope they're digging around in the, you know, bringing the skeletons out of these closets. I want new games in the classic vein mm. for both Spyro and Crash. Yeah. Like, I think that's I think what they're be doing, awesome. right? Cause... I hope so. Or they could be remastering these games that people mm. really didn't like. The, oh, Croc God, is coming next. Just... Bringing back the Elijah yeah, Wood Croc. Spyro. Yeah, yeah, the exactly. licensing on yeah. Elijah Wood and David Spade as uh, the butterfly. Uh, Gary Oldman's in that game, too. Oh, Are you God. serious? Yeah. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> There's no way they'd want to do that. I don't but think anyone good. wants them looking... to do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if you're looking for just a fun kart racer, uh, the campaign you can complete in a matter of hours. It's, But it's good. Like nice. it, it, It'll challenge you, and it, it's just really fun. I wonder if we're at that point. Maybe they'd want to take a little bit of a break for Crash, but Vicarious Visions, if it was... 2017 when Crash Remaster came out. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, they should be cranking on something, right? I mean, I'm, I assume they're supporting... I was going to say supporting Destiny. I guess they aren't doing that anymore, right? So no. what else would they be doing? Some maybe Call of Duty support? Yeah. Something like that? No. Jack and Daxter remake? New stuff for the next generation? Well, that's a Sony franchise. That's a different case. Oh, no, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> but Sony should definitely get on that and try and figure that out, how that works. Uh, that's cool. Um, what's it on? Uh, everything. Yeah, yeah. so PC as PS4. well. Or, it's not I on PC. I don't know. Yeah, I don't not think PC. PC. Okay. I don't think no it's PC. on PC. Crash, it's on every console, though. Yeah, the trilogy eventually came to PC, but it took yeah. a while, so maybe it's going to be that same window. I'm stuff. guessing that'll be the case. But it's on Switch, really? I believe so, yeah. Oh, I think it it's going to sell yeah. gangbusters. That's the one that seems front and center when you go look at retail. Yeah, yeah I played it version. on PS4. And it's definitely better than Sonic Team Racing that came out this year, the Branch A review? Team Sonic Racing. I'm sorry, Team Sonic Sonic Team Racing. is the developer. Uh -huh. Or one of the developers. Of course. It's very confusing. I I'd imagine know. it's better. <laughs> yeah, I, I Team Sonic know. Racing was fun. A better yeah. lead character, I'll tell you that much. Mm -hmm. okay. ooh, 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 ooh. Ah, screw Sonic. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> we're live, man. You can't say that stuff. Uh, so normally we're at the point when we would uh, clap, but it just so happens, coincidentally, that the day we're broadcasting this live, the Game Informer office clap magic stopped working. Oh, I what? You're all familiar with this. Oh, yeah, there's a storm here forever. outside. There's a yeah. storm outside. Yeah, I think our publisher <laughs> sent out an email saying that claps no longer work. Can we change the name of the only? podcast to Clap Magic, by the way? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so at this point, uh, Brian Shea, do you want to mosey out of here and go find Dan Tack? If he's doing his job right, he might be outside that door. And specifically, you might want to remind the office for like, hey, look at those times uh, that are in the Slack channel for when they should head down. That'd <laughs> okay. be great. Say it angrily. Thank you. Yeah. Leo Vader, how's everything going tech-wise in there, man? It's going smooth. Ooh. Yeah, any, any big input? A lot of free Ben Hansen. <laughs> oh, okay. That's cool. That's nice. I didn't expect that overall. You didn't expect that overall? No. People like you. Yeah, you know, could go either way. <laughs> Uh, Reiner, what, uh, what's good on the website these days? Uh, all the Star Wars stuff. Yeah. 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 Gameinform.com slash Star Wars Jedi, I believe. Star Wars Jedi. Why yeah. not just say Jedi? 
<laughs> I don't like it when our URLs are too why, long. Why are you going to like... It's too late to change this. I know yeah. it's too late, but I feel like we just go... I feel like sometimes we want to save things, right? Like when we did yeah. Lego Star Wars as the cover, it's like, well, we can't do GameFormer.com slash... Star Wars. Like, sure. Why not? That's nothing else. Might be Jeff Quark's article I at think, this point. Honestly, <laughs> if you want to, <laughs> I think there's an SEO value to having the word Star Wars in the URL. Mm -hmm. So there you go. I don't know if that's true. I think it is. We'll ask Dan. This is SEO what our discussions expert. are like in the office, by yeah. the way. It's yeah, a I don't lot know. of headline debate and stuff like that. Okay, mm -hmm. but what about? So I saw that Leo had a video, which I love being so focused as this, where it's just like, hey, here's why Jedi Fallen Order was made on Unreal. Yeah. Uh, what was the takeaway there, Leo? Uh, I don't want to spoil the video. You'll have to check it out. <laughs> there is a crazy reason. No, but I love just focusing on that thing. And it's nice that, like, people are so focused on engines these days, I think, in the gaming community, that even, like, you know, it did pretty well traffic-wise. Like, people are interested. Maybe it's just because Frostbite is such, like, a cursed word right, uh, yeah. amongst the gaming community that any other aspect yeah, of it's this. It's like Voldemort. I think so. Oh. Dan Tech. Yeah. I, Welcome I like, to the podcast, I like man. engines. Engines are fun. What do uh, you got there? What's oh, that hat? Displaying my love for agriculture. What does it say? I can't see it from it's here. rowdy and rural. Okay. When you walked in this morning, I don't think you're wearing that hat. I wasn't. You? Okay, fair enough. I, I put it on just for you. Is that why you're late? Is you're changing in the bathroom like late. Superman? <laughs> late. That's Hanson, fine. I tried to give you a great time. No, I transition. appreciated it. I appreciated it. And then you just started talking about a hat. Harry Potter Wizards Unite. This is uh, Harry Potter Go, uh, as yes. a lot of people I noticed. Mm -hmm. You're like, you know... People who aren't into games necessarily, like in my Facebook feed, I saw they're like, "Are you guys all playing Harry Potter Go?" Like, huh. f it, let's just call it Harry Potter Go. It's from the same team as Pokemon Go, kind of. Isn't yeah. it Niantic? It, it, the same studio, the publisher, yeah. Uh, but it is Warner San Francisco. Oh, really? Niantic. Actually developed yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, that's There's more cooks in the kitchen. Honestly, yeah. yeah, for sure. Uh, and what they cook up? Uh, <laughs> uh, brew up. It might be the best. Yeah, oh, good. Uh, Very good. Oh, potions. You. Uh, <laughs> oh, potions, so, that's the answer. <laughs> Pokemon Go, huge phenomenon. One of the biggest we've ever experienced in games. I'm not even joking around there. Like, yeah. it was Everybody was playing that. Uh, Harry Potter is the kind of natural evolution of that experience. And, and it, I think it's significant. Like I know people are quickly dismissing it as just Harry Potter Go yes. or, oh, you're doing the same kind of stuff. But there is so much more depth in this game than... Um, than Pokemon. Like, it, it really does, like, it's like, well, why can't this stuff be in Pokemon? What, um, what kind of stuff we're talking here? Uh, there is a legitimate pursuit of power. You, as a wizard, are, you start out um, pretty pretty weak, and as you play the game, you power up. You gain more hit points, uh, better spells. Uh, your wand does more, more damage, uh, critical hit chances for combat and uh it's also a really fun co-op experience that that dan and i have 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 found as we've been tackling fortresses and uh and just kind of journeying together trying to find uh the rare beasts and <laughs> the rare beasts <laughs> let the record show dan Fantastic has not smiled beasts, once so far when thinking about this game i, I there's a lot to think about in this game. really you so like it, it, it uh, a lot of quests too <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure yet i'm not sure oh. where i stand on like loving it or hating it i, I but i am Certainly impressed with the traditional RPG mechanics, which are not in Pokemon Go. Like, you really do feel like you're getting stronger. You can do more things. You can take on bigger challenges. You have a skill tree. You know, the, these sound like really simple things, and they yeah. are, but, like, they're missing from yeah. other AR games. A lot of people are just like, Pokemon didn't have a lot of content, and they definitely took that to heart here. Uh, and there's a ton of stuff to do, and it's just fun. Like, and it's really well made, too. Like It the, actually runs? <laughs> it does crash. Does it really? I Not as frequently. Yeah, I have had like almost no crashes compared to like Pokemon, really? which is like every second's like, did my ball even throw? <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, wait, still is Pokemon a mess? Yeah, it's it's, oh my yeah. god! Uh, it's, I mean, it's better. Yeah, like for it's sure, but better. It's, yeah. there's still issues. Uh, but uh, there's a lot of little like animations and skits that unfold as you're like trying to capture something like a beast, and you you know the the character models are really well done and. There's a lot of money that was put into this thing, and it's, it's weird. In some respects, yeah, it's very the the production values are way way higher than than Pokemon. The animations are great and all that stuff, but it does feel kind of strange. Like it doesn't have the same weight as capturing a Pokemon as as collecting a wizard and putting it in your sticker book. Right. Yeah. Um, whatever. But like, what do you do with that, right? So I understand I know. The, the predicament there. They got to make money the, somehow. The bigger hook is battling, and that's like when you go to the fortresses, which have like twenty levels each. Uh, you go there, and there's like set number of enemies on each level. So you can go in there five-player co-op and try to take out these levels 
the hook, some of the, the downfalls are you have a limited amount of <laughs> juice in your wand, basically, energy Grow in your wand. Up. It's Canon uh, Hansen. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you have a limited amount of, of power there. So mid battle, it could just be like, oh, you're done because your wand is out of power. <laughs> then uh, you just actually beat them with the stick. You, well, you know, then it's like, hey, do you want to pay real money? You spend some gold or your cash to mm -hmm. get gold to continue this battle. And then also they have a timer on on these dungeons. So Tack and I are coordinating as, <laughs> as we're in battle. And it's like, okay, I'm going to take this enemy. I'm going to give you this. Because this... there are light combat mechanics. You can, like, debuff enemies. You can, like, plan yeah. out fighting them. I'm okay. like, I'll put a debuff on this guy. You take that guy. I'll heal you. I'll put armor on you. You do this. You do that. And that's so enough to be like, oh, it's kind of like a real well, game. That's way more strategy yeah. than going... Well, of course. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's like uh, Infinity Blade when you're, like, defending or you have to do, like, the wand spells you're tracing. And, like, yeah. certain yeah. Different, different enemies have, like, different traits. Like, it's a, a pixie might have very low health, but it's, like, very hard to, like, aim at. You have to, like, zoom all over the place to try okay. to get a lock on it. Yeah, yeah. But, like, a big guy might have a huge HP pool, but be very easy to hit. Kyle, as the resident expert on Harry Potter lore, uh, how do you feel about this game <laughs> existing and what's satisfying on a nerdy lore level about uh, playing this thing? I'm very confused by it. Like really? because so it is. It's clearly after the books and the f films. Wait, there's actually like a setting. No, no. Mm -hmm. But Dan I mean, Harry Potter is there and he's older and he's like he's working really? at the Ministry of Magic. And then, but the thing is, like that's great. <laughs> and I think Radcliffe is in the game. He's, I think Harry Potter is one of the three schools you can learn from. You can yeah. like be your mentor. But it's actually Radcliffe, and he's right? an R now, so he can like. Bring you into the fold. Yeah. Will you answer his question? Is what? it Radcliffe? I don't know. Objection, Your Honor. It, it looks a lot oh, like you're... him. It doesn't. I don't know. <laughs> it looks no like him. <laughs> it looks like him a lot no, more it, than I like think the, it, the it's Avengers a nerdy do. Guy in glasses. Like, I believe it's him. It sounds like him. <laughs> they license all the actors. But the thing that's confusing is like I saved Tonks. And if uh, you guys, I know you're gonna be it's, a blank it's stare. It's a mishmash. Okay, of all and then also, come on, universe. Kyle. There's there's been like a calamity, a great calamity. So and everybody's displaced back from the dead. <laughs> everybody's displaced from out of time and space, so that they can use the whole universe. Okay. There, there is Dumbledore an, killed so there, Snape. There is, there, there is there is an in game. Conceit. There is an in game explanation for it. I I, can, I don't read any of that crap. Yeah. But but there is that there is that explanation. Okay, because right? it's very much like. I, I love Tonks, and it's very sad that she died in the final film. And to uh -huh. see her just there, Whoa, like, what are you doing? What the hell? Sorry. This is live. Sorry. What is wrong with you? And then there's a, a Mad Eye Moody was there to be saved yeah, too. I all like, the classics, okay? Yeah, but like, I don't know. It, it's it's is, is it satisfying from, at all, or just frustrating? Um, it's cool seeing your from favorite. A lore, from a lore, he still has to download oh, it. Apparently, but, oh, I'm sorry. Dan is telling me that it's cool to see oh. these characters that I thought <laughs> go, had passed ahead, away, Kyle. that go I was ahead. very emotionally invested in. Uh -huh. uh, okay, from a lore perspective, I, I find it very confusing. But maybe I'm just not like doing my own enough research on my own, I guess. Right, right. Um, I mean, I play Pokemon Go for the lore. It's not I don't. about the lore. You wait, yeah, wait a minute. What? Hang on. Why are Pokemon in the real wait, world? Wait, why are you guys dismissing Harry Potter <laughs> lore? We're like, not, this is, but trying to understand in like, what, how I serious think the game shouting, takes it. Uh, in what who cares world? about the lore that is, is like dismissing the, the lore. That is the last thing you should be paying attention in to Harry in Harry Potter? What, for a mobile yes. game. <laughs> that is the, like, this is, this is, how am I if, here Rad, if Daniel game Radcliffe from, is like part of this, this to me should be like, Harry Potter compared to Pokemon is much more about world building Of course, yeah, I completely agree, but also. Stop yelling at me. For any, like, what, what, what What's mobile game here? has like been deathly serious, like, deathly uh, hollow serious about like keeping I, up with the lore? Oh, those, I, I mean, those touch three Marvel games. <laughs> I mean, that lore. Is I, I'm, hot. Cer I'm certainly exaggerating, but I mean, just at a base level, like I was confused <laughs> yeah, to see these characters, it. and like, fine, there's a conceit for it, but it hang wasn't on, immediately apparent. You were confused to see these. Come on, come on, they're Harry yes. Potter characters. They get used all the time. They're going to get re... Am I, am I, like, I feel like I'm you, going insane. Do you think those characters are ever going to come back in film or other mediums? Because they absolutely will. And you won't be confused. You'll be like, this is I a don't, different part of the I timeline. I don't think Tonks and Mad-Eye Moody are ever coming back. All right. Oh, write it down. They just announced the spin-off. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's kind of like a Hobbs and Shaw situation. I mean, the whole... <laughs> Fantastic Meets and Where to Find Them, part uh, five. I mean, coming. it is... <laughs> The, the the idea that people cannot back come back from the dead in this magical world is very important to uh -huh. Harry growing up. Like that is you, substantial. It's literally a, a world of magic that we anything got can it. happen. We got it. There Look, I hear you. I hear you, it Kyle. Seems, it seems I interesting. It. I haven't deleted it. I'm still playing it. I can, I'm happy to dismiss that stuff that's confusing. <laughs> but yeah. it is. But I mean, I think we should acknowledge that like the story of Harry Potter is far more important than the story of Pokemon. Yes. Yeah. There's no. Yeah. There's no debate. And I just feel like you know if they mess up canon and it's just all a mishmash for like yeah. the avalanche console game then i understand more than being frustrated with sure. the mobile where everybody just yeah. expects it's a hey guys it's a bit of a cash grab if yes. i may if sure. i may be honest yeah. about this i think thing. anybody being honest they, with it like there there are there are mobile systems in that game okay? they really want your money 
Well, that's <laughs> fun. And they're not going to get it for the Fantastic Beast films, so we need to yeah. find some other avenue. Go. Let's turn that into Jeez. a trilogy instead of five yeah. films, please. Speaking Ooh. of Fantastic Beast, Dan, you're one of my favorite, and uh, I want you to come back for emails okay, if you're cool. up for that. Uh, in the meanwhile, do you want to go uh, clap in Serial's face and have him teleport here? I don't need to clap here now, do I? It doesn't work today. We're live. <laughs> the rain <laughs> is really messing up the clapping transitions. Okay, bye. Uh, Kyle, rank the Harry Potter films. I have already on the podcast. Are you serious? Yes. <laughs> That's so sad. We did a, yeah, um, it, the, the, it was an email from someone and they said, rank, do a ranking w- by just the numbers without saying what the title of the thing you're ranking is. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was very fun. But I mean, I mean, Azkaban's my favorite. I love uh, Quaran and that film's great. And I also like the second to last one a lot because that's like, I love stories where like, darkest before the dawn kind of stories you know okay yeah like where things go really bad like and you feel... like infinity war more than Endgame? yes actually yeah uh-huh. yeah i do and and i feel like the second to last harry potter film is that where it's like things are gonna go things have gone really bad let's yeah. see if they can pull it all together in the next film so. now was that just halfway through the book Did yeah they the... do split it into two yeah they yeah. split the last book yeah it was a confusing thing yeah Am I wrong for liking Order of the Phoenix so much? Because no. it's like I love like training, and that yeah. entire movie was just yeah. like a cool training montage of like yeah. secret rooms, secret classes. We've got to build for the great darkness coming. I thought that stuff was so cool. Yeah, I like that. The only one that I didn't really love was um, the the sixth book and the sixth film, I guess, because it's just a lot of backstory, you know, which is important, but it's like a lot of you know eating your vegetables yeah. to figure out what's happening. Have there. you seen the second Fantastic Beast yet? No. <laughs> so insane. I, I know, it's telling. Oh, it's it? very important. <laughs> yeah, I'm Harry. I care about <laughs> Harry. I don't uh-huh. care about the other one. All right. He's in it. Serial Vasquez. No, he's not. Don't Hello. Welcome, sir. <laughs> no, sure. <laughs> Whatever, man. You got it. Uh, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Yeah. yeah. This is a game you Igarashi. reviewed. Yes, Igarashi's uh, spiritual Ooh. successor to Castlevania has been a long time coming. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, it's getting hot and heavy. Review score, Igarashi. please. Uh, 8.5. 8.5. Yeah. That's higher than I expected. This is very yeah, impressive. That's about that, right. That game's that's development right. has been tumultuous. So, uh, like, delayed. They had that whole backer bonus game, Curse of the Moon, that ended up coming out before uh, Ritual of the Night. But people liked a lot. It was like yeah. a Castlevania 3 one. Yeah. Yeah, a lot, of the, a lot of the early demos of that game didn't look great. Uh, and like I think it's interesting how this highlights how development is one of those things where it's like it's always on fire until it isn't, right? Uh-huh. Uh, and they had that video where they were like, oh, the graphics look like poop in one side, and then they look good now on the other. Uh, and they still don't look like amazing. I think a lot they of... They just look like pee-pee? Yeah. They okay. w- it went from poo-poo to pee-pee. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is that in your review? Is that yeah. the headline? I mean, Joe didn't like it, but I, you know, I... I fought for he it. He fought you know? for it. I'm yeah, yeah P. Garashi. I insist on the PP. <laughs> I think your review headline, honestly, should have been not Mighty Number no. Nine. Because that's like all I was curious about. <laughs> it's it's true. like, is this another Mighty Number no. Nine? No, right? it's, it's not, not, which is yeah. exciting. That was actually my score at first. Uh, <laughs> not no, but Mighty Number no. Nine out of 10. It, it feels very familiar in a lot of ways where yeah. you think about how a lot of games that have built on this formula have, you know, tried different things. And, and that formula is uh, Castlevania. But just Symphony of the Night specifically, right? Right, yeah, yeah. Okay. So a lot yeah. of it is, hey, you're exploring this giant map, you know, that they use the same layout of like, hey, it just looks like a spreadsheet basically with like red rooms for saving and, and green rooms for teleporting. Uh, and like this is one of the biggest castles in that in that space of like, here's this enormous thing. And one of the things that I, it kind of like crystallized my thoughts on uh, Time Spinner a little bit, which I think a lot of people liked and I liked, but not as much as I think a lot of other people. And I think a lot of it was that map because it felt very linear where you're... The Time Spinner was another Metrovania game. Right, right, okay. right. Where uh, you went from, here's like this open area that you can kind of explore and then here's sort of a funnel and then here's another spoke where you can explore. Yeah. Right. This feels like you're exploring this map in this very circuitous way. You're going from this section and then this opens up this other path and uh, you're going back and forth. There's a, There are some sections where like there's one segment where you're on a train that feels very, that is very linear. But for the most part, you are... Uh, exploring this enormous thing and the way they ramp up your abilities and they offer you like a double jump, things like that. The way they dole those out, I think is very good. Uh, And they build on it with very interesting uh, RPG mechanics. Like you can upgrade your armor. There's a whole cooking and crafting system, which is like more intricate than I thought. The shards. Right. And you have all these abilities that are basically when you kill, it's what they did in Dawn of Sorrow, basically where if you kill an enemy, there's a chance that they'll drop like a gem, a shard, That'll give you an ability that you can use. Some of them are passive, but some of them are like, hey, now you can, now you can swim underwater for a little bit. Yeah, right. Um, and you can upgrade those too. Are you guys yeah. digging this, Kyle and Reiner? Yeah, for sure. I played like. What do you um, think of the lore? 
I, I'm interested. Mr. Lerby. I, I'm honestly interested in it. I really? mean, it's definitely like, it's a it's a conceit to let's get to a castle filled with demons, but it's like, there's something interesting. Is yeah. it vampires or what's going on? No, here? it's, no. it's uh, something called shard binders. And, and so shard binders? Yeah, it's, it's a little Biden bit, or something. it's sort of like <laughs> a doom a little bit in that the whole point is that these alchemists were trying to bring demons basically into yeah. the world. And there's something, and maybe you can clarify this because I am i don't know the full story, but like they try to make like these super powerful like like uh, Miriam is kind of like this, they try to make like a super powerful soldier, like wizard, Basically, and it like yeah. put her in a coma, but she managed to survive. So she wakes up right. all these so years later. And she's like one of up. many shard binders. And then she happens to uh, survive by being asleep. Basically during yeah. this 10 year period where a lot of shard binders are. Done. Guys, it's so it's thing. interesting, Hanson. You know, I, that. I'm not <laughs> judging. Uh, I was just trying to make fun of Kyle. Yeah. 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 For, uh, for, 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 for taking the Harry yeah. Potter lore yeah. seriously. There was a funny <laughs> moment. Uh, I've been out of the office this week. I don't know if you've noticed the mm -hmm. uh, story. Cause, I'm stuck in court, <laughs> but uh, there's a funny moment last week when like Miller started playing the game. Then he came back into the room and basically walked into the bullpen like Kramer coming into Jerry's apartment. It's like, <laughs> hey, this Bloodstone game, it's just Symphony of the Night again. This is awesome. Like, yeah. it, like he was su surprised by how closely it mirrors almost everything from Symphony of the yeah, Night. Yeah, there's, I mean, like the the quest system involves a lot of cooking. Like, hey, like this lady wants pizza, and you have to go out and find <laughs> cheese and milk, and you have to turn that into pizza dough. Then you have to get cheese and pepperoni to make a pizza. Like, there's, it, it is. A, if you want to go out and just explore stuff and just kill stuff at random to get random drops, yeah. Uh, that that's in there for you, and there's a lot of optional stuff. There's a lot of really cool surp uh, surprises uh, that you can go hunt down. There's a lot of obscure stuff oh, that I think is really cool. Yeah, there's like a home base you have. Yeah, basically. yeah. Real quick, you literally pizza, or is that you just using? It as an no, it's it's she. What this lady wants a pizza, and you need to give it to her. Sweet, quirky. <laughs> uh, the uh, so a lot of debate about the Switch version of this game. Oof. It was originally planned for yeah. Wii U and Vita. Armature was going to make those. That got canceled and then they eventually made a port to switch now right which uh, is the one i'm playing by the way oh and how yeah. is it for you kyle um i don't have a a point of comparison yeah almost on purpose because like i just want to play it on switch i don't know what i'm missing <laughs> yeah i'm honestly like like letting but it seems okay like it's not it's uh it's not as uh what's the word i'm looking for like it doesn't control as well as like the ds castlevania games okay there's like a little bit of latency yeah it, but it, not enough to like really deter my experience so far it's not it doesn't seem like oh i know i'm getting shafted with this version I, yeah no, it, I, does, it does I seem don't. like it, it's playable <laughs> for people who have seen both versions it does feel like this is the worst version of the game oh for sure uh and there have been a lot of complaints about that about Visuals, some of the input lag rate, right? yeah, yeah uh like the early section where we are on a boat just straight up doesn't have rain in it uh right i think they patched it because okay. I, I downloaded a patch last night and there there i can confirm rain <laughs> okay <laughs> just like today Weird. uh but yeah, it, they, it definitely feels like if you are on the fence about which version to get, maybe don't get the Switch version just yet. But if the right. portability is such a huge factor for you... I think, it, I think a lot of people still... It's the same thing that happened with Dead Cells, right? Like, exactly, yeah. yeah. yeah and it's not that. like it's a you know technical masterpiece or anything, even on PS4. It get, like Some of the textures in the backgrounds look a little muddy. And there's it was one of those things where I kind of struggled whether or not to include it in my review. But like some of the load times between areas are... J like They're not long... But they're just sort of like long enough to be annoying. Yeah, a little bit. Like yeah. they're they're longer than short, let's say, but not <laughs> long. And let's say, great. Come wow. to Game Informer for yeah. specificity. Yeah, please. I, I do like I like it overall. I, I think it is a very good return to that formula. I will say though that if he goes back and does another one of these, I hope he iterates in a, on it a little bit more because it does feel, especially in its early early hours, it feels a little too familiar. Of like, sure. I'm just making another one of those games, and a lot of the reason I'm guessing why Konami stopped making them is because they turn those out pretty quickly right. uh even like from yeah. the game boy advance to the ds era and i'm guessing like a lot of people just got tired of this formula eventually um so i hope that if he goes back to this he that he iterates on the formula a little bit more than he did in this one yeah super cool uh hey leo hey man you're jumping that hot mic uh you and Suri and i we went to summer games done quick mm -hmm. uh on monday night here in minneapolis which is the uh annual for summer games done quick at least uh like charity speedrunning marathon yeah we actually did, that's where you were doing your jury duty right yeah that's what i yeah. meant by jury duty yeah. it was yeah. not clear that's yeah. where i killed that guy that that <laughs> trial <laughs> <laughs> uh what'd you think about that experience leo's your first time there yeah it was super fun it was nice being able to like watch a bit of a speed run and then wander around and there's so much else to do there is and you don't get the sense like you know obviously you're, you're watching the main stage and stuff but then they have so many side rooms and the crazy thing is you're wandering around Every person you encounter is amazing at games. Like, oh, it's a casual game of Dr. Mario going on here in the corner. Like, oh, no, this is the most intense, fast <laughs> game of Dr. Mario I've ever seen in my life. Like, we've yeah. been walking around, like, practice casual room, 
And then there's like some Shrek game for GameCube, and the guy's like moving Shrek like <laughs> just to min max his speed. It's like everybody yeah. is just amazing. There was a my favorite room was we wandered into a room where everyone was playing Super Mario Sunshine. Yes, like uh, what do you think? Uh, Twenty five people yeah. playing Super Mario Sunshine, yeah. and it, it was it was one of those things where we were like is like is that is game a competition? Just, this po- that's exactly what it was. It was, it was everyone a race. everyone signed up for a tournament where they all would race. That's the game. super and fun this is off camera. Yeah. And the amazing thing is like it's at this hotel in Minneapolis every year. Uh, Admit uh, seventy bucks, you can get in, which mm-hmm. seems crazy. And for the it seems week, like for the entire week, week right? and also they have multiple rooms filled with arcade games and like pinball, all completely free. And they have awesome, weird, deep cut arcade choices, like a lot yeah. of music rhythm stuff from Japan, like all of Konami's stuff. Like there's games that I've never played before called like Jubeat, Sound Voltex, Shinathum, and then uh, Suryl insisted on playing a game called Scato. Scato, oh. yeah, where you it was basically like. A weird, I don't know, what would you call it? Sort it's of like beer a, pong? It's beer pong meets ski ball where you have to bounce the ping pong ball and it has to hit certain paddles before going in the middle. Yeah. And then every time you get it in the middle, it says... Scato. And every time you miss it, it says... <laughs> miss Scato. Or, <laughs> or if you like really mess it up, it says miss, 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 miss Scato. <laughs> yeah, it's very clear. <laughs> but the uh, like sound Voltex, that game in particular, you're like turning dials and banging on multiple keys and sort stuff. Sort of like DJ Hero a little bit. Right, but seeing these speedrunners do it, Unbelievable. There was an absolute god playing it. it yeah, was, he you could not keep up with what was happening. Yeah. Which, which god? Speed? Oh, the Christian one. Oh, okay. okay. How wow. do you speedrun a Welcome. rhythm game? No, but just, I think the reflexes are so attuned. And oh, okay. like, with that mentality. Just people yes. who are really good at it. Yeah. Right, and then we right. play Juby, which is like this weird... So, Sort of sampling game where you're basically like you have a sixteen you have sixteen buttons basically and you're like basically just touching them in rhythm, sort of like elite beat agents. Yeah, yeah. So it's like a big expo. Yes. All these side rooms. What's going on on the main stage though? Like, what do they consider like the elite games that get that space? Uh, let's see. Circle the Moon. They did uh, just for Bloodstain Connection. Uh, now, we- are they like? Trying to beat records before, or are they first time? If you time? happen to beat a record, that's, that's fine. Cool. Uh, they, they've yeah. done it a couple of times, but I, I think they're they're more about at like you know, demonstrating what it's like to run this game versus like, no, I'm really going to try to like do my because a lot of them will say like, hey, look, there's a good chance that there's a lot of RNG here that is going to mess up my run, and I'm uh, usually I would just start over to get a better time, but because I don't really have that luxury here, I'm going to save, which cuts seconds off my time. But if I die, I don't have to restart the entire game. So they'll, they'll make like a lot of caveats for that. Kind of the big speedrunners are the ones getting the stage then? Is that yeah, right? yeah. There, there's, some, there's some, like, uh, I, I think Kirby Masta has been on a few of them. He was on this morning, I think, playing Fire Emblem. Um, oh, but wow. for the most part, I think they, they try to have, you know, people who, like, even if they're running the same game again, they'll have different people running it. So Yeah. And we uh, had, um, cool. when we were there, first showed up, they were kicking off their Borderlands 2 co-op stream which mm-hmm. they broke the hell out of that game which is really fun like <laughs> and they actually had somebody a couple of people skyped in from gearbox to like watch it and and they're like they started out the stream with being like all right gearbox uh you want to give a number of minutes until we can break your game and the guy from gearbox is like well i've seen this run before so i'm gonna go 10 minutes before you can break our game and he's like nope and just like did something <laughs> on the controller and then just like infinite guns were like spouting <laughs> all of them it's like insane yeah. how they can do that they had, a, they had one trick where they were able to like use the bonus of a gun over and over again to give them extra running speed to where by the end of it they were running at 10 times speed basically <laughs> yes like faster than the car the and so <laughs> yeah. trying to like make those turns and keep up while you're going that fast it's just amazing and the part that you know obviously they're uh, amazing physical esports athletes whatever you want to call it but the part that blows my mind too is just they're all so good at talking and they're making jokes and mm-hmm. it feels so natural it rarely does it feel like it's just an awkward mess that's falling apart these people are professional nerds yeah. at playing and then professional nerds at speaking it's insane yeah i think a lot of best runs are very much informed by the people speaking versus like oh here's a cool trick because if you don't know what's going on, it's hard to understand it. But, you know, there will be people who are, like, who will contextualize what they're doing. Like, the the run right after that was Metroid Prime, awesome. where the guy yeah, was like, hey, That's I'm on the cool. planet. I, I just arrived on the planet after the space station portion, and and he did basically, like, a side hop that's like, oh, yeah, I just skipped, like, one-third of the game by, like, getting this upgrade before I was, po- like, yeah. way before I was supposed to. And there's weird things in that game, too, when you're, like, scanning things. You can do, like, a side hop in the middle of the scan. Right, and, and that's the like fastest way to move, stuff. basically, yeah. until you get, like, the, the boost ball. There are applause breaks in space. 
speed runs, you know, when they do something amazing, the crowd will just applaud for a few seconds. That Metroid Prime speed run, I just wanted to be applauding the entire time. <laughs> yeah. Should have been an hour of there applause. There was that thing where he just got stuck in, like, it looked like he got stuck in a corner, but he was actually just accelerating the speed of the morph ball over and over for like yes. a minute. And it was like, oh, eventually I will be able to go so fast it'll just go to not a number in the val in the game's code, and I'll just teleport across like four <laughs> rooms or something. So it's like, imagine like a Sonic spin bar, like you know the morph yeah. ball, and then it just like it stands still, like when a tire's going so fast it looks like it's still. Yeah. And then you just sit there awkwardly for like a minute, and it's like. Then you're just in a different yeah. part of the game. <laughs> right. What is happening? And, and the second time he did it, it was like, I'm just going to turn into this, like, I'm going to go so fast, I'm turning into the shining orb that it's just going to like... sphere. Yeah, basically. It was it was amazing. Yeah, it's super fun. Uh, so definitely watch that. It'll be going through Sunday, so you can still tune in. And uh, donate. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, true. Summer yeah. Games Done Quick. It's all for Doctors Without Borders. Seems great. Um, real quick, Serial Samurai Showdown. Yeah. You gave it an 8. Uh, I gave it a 775. 775, <laughs> I meant to say. The grand return it's of live. Samurai Showdown. It's, it's a very fine distinction. Uh, I, like, I like it. I like it quite a bit. Okay, it seemed yeah. like uh, from the gist of conversations I heard in the office, like the one-on-one -on -one fighting is good. Everything around that is not great. It's like it's fine. Like that, That's sort okay. of the thing where it feels like a like the bare minimum for a fighting game in a lot of ways where you've got an arcade mode, you've got like a time trial, you've got survival. The online system is kind of weird because if you want to play with a friend, you have to make a lobby and then you have to invite them and then you have to uh, jump into like, hey, there's 10 spots in this lobby. Both of you jump into this one <laughs> subsection of the lobby and yeah. now you fight and then you're broken up again and then you have to both join that thing. So it's a little... It's a little like much, Funky. but you can yeah. you do get your matches in. Um, there's a you can rematch in ranked multiple times, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, maybe a little exploitive in that you if you find the right person, you can just say, "Hey, just lose to me all the time. Just give me a bunch of points." Um, but I think that stuff works. It's fine. It, there's nothing like exciting or flashy about it. Um, and they have this ghost mode uh, where the idea was that it would record you while you're playing offline in versus matches or arcade mode, and it would say, "Hey, we we've, we've created a, a ghost of you." And you can play against your ghost mm -hmm. or play against other people's ghosts and get better and like basically see what it's like to play against other people asynchronously. And that doesn't really work. Uh, so I was able to go, you can go to leaderboards and say like, here's the top player's ghost. And I was able to beat them like without breaking a sweat. Basically, because right. all they do is they just spam heavy attack and they'll jump forward. And basically, I was playing as Galford and I just used my uh, fireball, my, my kunai, and just basically spam that and won every match. Can you explain where Samurai Showdown stood in the fighting game community and like where it specifically stands now. Like if you, what does this have that other games don't? What's the appeal of Samurai Showdown compared to everything it's, else? It's essentially, it's this weird mix between being very approachable in the sense that you don't have to really learn combos. Uh, there's maybe one or, th one or a couple things that you might have to learn where, you know, uh, Kinjiro, for example, has a special move where you have to do the fireball motion three times in a row. And that's sort of his special move. Um, but beyond that, like you may have to learn like, Hey, half circle forward and then, or forward and then half circle forward. That's mm -hmm. maybe the most complicated motion in the entire game. Um, and there's a lot of systems to learn like, Hey, you can do a dodge or you can do a deflect, which if you, they hit you with a heart attack, they'll, it'll disarm them and they won't be able to use their sword until they pick it up. Uh, so there's a lot of like, it's more about learning different maneuvers than it is about, Hey, here's this long combo. And then huh. the other thing is that like, because of, there aren't any combos, if you get hit with a heavy attack, that's like a third of your health gone. Like it, it is. It can be super lethal. They have big and chunky. Yeah, they have these super special moves where, or you, you have a rage meter where as it fills, as you take damage, you start dealing more damage, and you can basically sacrifice that entire meter to do this incredibly fast dash across the screen. And if that lands, that's like sixty five percent of your health uh -huh. so it's a lot of very lethal attacks the the movement speed by default is very slow but the reason they do that is because they want you to take gambles a lot where it's like this very slow state where every once in a while someone makes it like a sudden move and either the person is ready for it or not okay the the classic kurosawa like yeah like yeah doing this basically so nowhere okay yeah, so it's a lot of people like very slowly maneuvering across the screen one of them dashing and then okay are they going to jump at me are they going to slide uh, so i think it's very approachable in that if you understand what makes fighting games tick, you can get into this and out uh, like uh, pretty easily versus like, hey, they just patched all this stuff. Now I have to learn, relearn combos. Like a few months later, I can see myself like, hey, if I, if I fall off of this and then come back in a couple months, I won't have as much difficulty, you know, picking it up again. Yeah. So I think it's really cool. I think a lot of the characters are really nice. There's a lot of variety. Uh, a lot of the different maneuvers work really, really well. So I'm having, I'm having a good time for it. I'm just, if this isn't, if you're not the kind of person who plays, who's already into this of like, hey, I want to play multiplayer. Yeah. There's really not a lot for it. Okay. Again. So a somewhat sex successful return yeah. for Samurai Showdown. Yeah. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> Very clearly. Sweet. Um, okay. Kyle and Reiner, do you guys want to get Joe and Cork 
No matter what, bring them down. I'll get Joe. You get Cork. All okay, right. great. Thank you. Bye. Uh, Kyle, come back for emails. Uh, Reiner, uh, give us your moral support. Yeah. Harry Potter lore. What was that? I don't know. He said it was Come fine. on. He's really out on a limb. <laughs> uh, Serial, uh, I heard some rumblings a while ago that uh, you were interested in getting into speedrunning. Uh, what is yeah. this? Uh, I've been looking into uh, doing a feature on speedrunning. It's it's one of those things where it's hard to like keep up just because like, it's been in uh, flux for a while. A lot of it has been... There's been a lot of things that have been keeping me busy. But What I, is the feature specifically? Uh, basically, I do want to learn how to speedrun a game. A game, or do you have a game in mind? I have a game in mind. It's hard to know because uh, there, I have a couple of choices that I want to do. It's just a matter of like, hey, how uh, how popular are they? Oh, are they let the chat decide. We're doing this live. Yeah, after it'll, all. yeah they, the the chat is really good about assigning stuff because they don't understand the difficulty of it of what of the obstacles in any given game. So they could just offhandedly say whatever. What, you know? what are the game options? Uh, I think the one I'm looking at is Volgar the Viking. Which is like an adult swim game that's a, a sort huh. of a very I don't I don't maybe act razor I don't know if that's a good reference point. Oh, where you're just sort of slashing stuff and then if you get hit you die. And okay. Then you build up you slowly build Wait, up armor. Wait, you're telling me you get hit and you get you die? Well, in, in one it, if you die without armor, basically you immediately die. It's sort of it's oh, maybe you're Ghost like and Goblins. Arthur type. Yeah, mm. Ghost and Goblins is probably the best. Oh, right on. Reference for it. Uh, Joe Juba and Jeff Corker here. Hey. Hi, welcome. I didn't know we were doing this live. Oh yeah, it's tricky, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, Joe, like, keep uh, yourself in check. Yeah, no right. kidding. Remember uh, yesterday when uh, Sega revealed that new game? And you're like, yeah. what the hell is this? What is this? <laughs> I I don't know for sure myself yet. I mean, I haven't I haven't seen any more than anyone else. But it looks like it's uh, it's a successor to Act Razor, except not like with the same creative team or anything. But just that mm -hmm. that concept of alternating between a sort of like town simulation, like city builder kind of thing, and then 2D side scrolling action sequence. It's called Soul Seraph. Yeah. No no mm -hmm. space. Soul it looks Seraph. like something that if. An indie developer made something, and it was an IP that Sega owned. Sega would sue them yeah. for making it. Like, <laughs> which is confusing. Yeah. Must stop. D does Sega own ActRaiser? No, that was an NX game. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Okay, so that's why. Because uh, I saw that, and I thought you were so excited about it. And all, all the ActRaiser fans were excited about it. But then it's like, well, wait a minute. Why not just call it ActRaiser? Like, what's going on here? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's interesting for me. And I, I may have even said this on the podcast before, but like that is that is one kind of evolutionary dead end in the world of video games mm -hmm. that always just like baffled me. Yeah. Right. Like there so was good. There was Act Razor and that game was so good and so clever. Just for the city building combined with platforming stuff. Well yeah uh, yeah, I guess. Okay. But like the way that those two things kind of in, I mean it, they don't there aren't like a whole bunch of like crossover systems or something. But there's still a sense of like them interacting and creating this sense because like the story of that game is like you're a god who needs to like guide civilization. Mm -hmm. So just that feeling of divinity of like like you can like guide this town and then you like inhabit a statue and you go and you like hack hack down big monsters and stuff. Oh, are you feeling okay, Joe? Yeah. What? Okay, great. <laughs> I don't know, it's good. <laughs> Very excited. So I was always sad that that idea because there was an Act Razor two, but it was solely a, a 2D platformer. Oh, weird. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. it, it took out that, that like simulation element. So that was one of those things where it's like, why has no game, not even like indie games, like there, no one really built on that foundation. So I am really excited about this. What if is there any modern way to play Act Razor? Is it on like the Wii U eShop or anything like that? That's a good question. I don't know. Okay. It seems like I don't really see people talking about it. It'd be nice if they had some modern way of actually playing that thing. Hey, you know what's weird about Samurai Showdown? Mm. Uh, there's no W. Yeah, it's S H O D O. Yeah. And you know what's weird about Judgment? There's no E in Judgment. Is you that's on you. That's not weird. That's, that's, how you, that's how you spell judgment. I understand judgment. that, that's but like a lot of people lightening. misspell stuff. Like, I saw some official channels misspelling Judgment for this game. I think it's all over the place. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, says Reviews Editor. So, Judgment. Jeff Cork, you have played it. Yeah, I played You've it. finished it. I finished it. Uh, Joe and Cyril, have you guys played it as well? Yeah, I've played a couple hours. I I've, played it for preview, and then I playing it now. Yeah, okay. I've, I've played a few hours now. Oh, awesome. Uh, Jeff Cork, do you have a final verdict on this sucker? Yeah, it's super fun. Okay, great. Do you have a <laughs> review score verdict? Well, yeah. Well, if you want to be reductive, eight. Oh, great. That's the yeah, one I'm Conversation for. over. Great. <laughs> Done. That's so everything you need to know about Judgment. So Judgment is from the Yakuza team, correct? Exactly. And it's a spinoff of Yakuza, or how should we see this? Well, let's call it a spinoff, yeah. I mean, but the, there are the, way Jeff, the way Jeff phrased it in his review, which I really liked, was like, this is, this is 
Well, maybe we edited this specific phrasing out. But he said it's a, <laughs> he said it's a, it's a Yakuza game in all but name. Yeah, I mean, like it, to the point where there are individual animations. If you play the Yakuza games, you'll recognize like in combat and everything like that. And it's, same location, right? Is it still same? Yeah, Osaka. No. Oh, okay. Kamurocho. It's okay. a fake city in Tokyo. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Except, so what's different this time around? A new character. There's like he's a detective. He used to be an attorney, so he's uh, investigating crimes. And there's like some light detective work really? in there. So interesting. Yeah. This sounds very much up Joe's alley. Yeah, it is so up my alley. Yeah. Like, I, like I am after only a few hours so far. Like this is quickly becoming my front runner for game of the year right now. Holy yeah. cow! <laughs> yeah. wow. like, what's, what's super interesting about it is like Sega. I think they realized with this generation that the Yakuza series had become super unwieldy and it was difficult for new players to get on board, right? So they released Yakuza 0, and then I've also released remasters for the first few games, you know, with more on the way. So there's a great entry point for people who were curious about it but didn't want to go back or couldn't find these old PS2 games, right? PS2 and PS3. Right. Yeah. But then you have someone like Joe, where it's like now even he's overwhelmed by the remasters and re-releases. Yeah, and yeah. even the task yeah. of hey, even if it was the entry point like Yakuza Zero, there's right. a, there's the implication of this is the start of something much larger. Yeah, right. right. This is the first fifty hours of what is ultimately a three hundred and fifty <laughs> hour journey. Right. Exactly. Right. But and this like, is like a, a clean starting point. That sounds really. If you're tempting. super curious about what the Yakuza games are like. And you can play it in English in case the Japanese part of it turned you off. Yeah, so they actually dubbed it uh, for the first time yeah. in a while. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. How was the English voice acting? That's fine. I like. I went immediately to Japanese. Oh, did you? Yeah. I started so, in Japanese and actually went to English for a little bit because oh. I'm just kind of testing them out. But I, I like the English stuff. Like they they resync all the lip audio, so it's really it's, oh wow. Yeah, okay. So it matches. See, I I switch. I started with Japanese mm -hmm. and switched to English for maybe a, a few cutscenes mm -hmm. and was like. Yeah, I mean, this is nice in the sense that I don't have to read the subtitle and I can understand what they're saying and can look at my phone during cutscenes if I need to. But, like, I had already gotten used to the sort of tone of mm -hmm. the Japanese voice actors. So then when it switched to, like, I swear, the dude the dude who's, I can't remember his name now, Shintani, maybe? Your, like, lawyer buddy in mm -hmm. the beginning. Um, I swear he's voiced by Colonel Campbell from oh, Metal really? Gear. Oh, maybe. And it's really hard to unhear that. Especially yeah. when you already have a different sort of voice associated with the character, even if you can't understand the words. Yeah. Uh, so I switch back to Japanese now. Actually, really I've been playing yeah. a lot of StarCraft Two recently, and I, he does the voice for like the Protoss commanders, like it was construct more digital pylons and all yeah. that stuff. It can construct additional pylons, I should say. It's just like it is so Colonel Campbell, and I cannot unhear it, and it's a curse. Yeah. It's a curse for me, and my children. So eight. It seems like you really love the Yakuza games. They scored mm -hmm. a little bit higher. Is there something bringing this one down a little bit more? I think ultimately the the way that the detective stuff is implemented is a little clunky. It's got some missions that it leans on fairly heavily where you tail suspects and they have the suspicion meter and they'll, as they're walking, will stop randomly in the middle of the street and turn around and like, Ooh. look, and you have to like hide and cover to make sure no. that they don't see you. That's um, the kind of stuff they took out of Assassin's Creed like five years ago because everyone hated it. People downvoted those missions when yeah. they had that rating system. <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah. Just, there's just a lot of very slow like, hey, you have to look, find this thing in this room and look around in first person or like, hey, here's a scene. You're going to have to find mm -hmm. the three clues. And mm -hmm. it works to establish him as a detective, but yeah. it does feel like Okay, th this is this is busy work for a mm -hmm. reason. You know, this is this is a job, right? Yeah, it's yeah. not like a cool, you know, exciting thing and, that you're doing. And the way that the investigations work too is you you kind of piece together these clues, and then you have moments where you confront someone or discuss the evidence with them. Yeah. And it's presented as like part of an investigation. In actuality, it's just instead of a dialogue tree going down in a list, they just do it in the four quadrants, and then you can you can say the wrong thing, and he'll just be like, "Oh, that can't be right." Let me try this again. So there's yeah. no real penalty as, except for a slight, like, you don't get as much, like, bonus XP. But, but you get it, XP for everything you do anyway. So oh, yeah, like, yeah. You could, like, eat a chicken sandwich at Wild Jackson and get as much <laughs> yeah. as if you that were, That was like, as fulfilling as, as being smart about this conversation. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. But overall, it's super yeah. fun. And, oh, great. And interesting. And, like, the story is, like... Be prepared. It's not all about hitting people with bicycles. There are like lengthy cutscenes oh, that really? just go on forever. But I find them super interesting. And the story is like what I like about them is they try to incorporate larger societal issues in in the plot lines. And yeah, it's I thought that's what you didn't like weird. about the modern Twilight Zone, though. Well, I think this is better. 
Uh, Except for Blurry Man. One thing I want to say, because like we've we've leaned a little bit into like comparisons to Yakuza Mm -hmm. here, but like if you don't know, like I played ten hours of Yakuza Mm -hmm. Zero, enjoyed it, but got kind of scared off. Yeah. Um, But if you're a newcomer, with like part of the appeal of this is like it's this weird kind of like life simulation slash brawler. So you're wandering around this this fake city, the fictional fictional city uh, that's part of Tokyo. And you're just like going to restaurants and like doing weird side quests for people mm-hmm. to like make friends. And every like very fre- frequently just like street thugs <laughs> stop you and you need to for no be- reason. You need to beat them up with mm-hmm. just these like these like r- like stylish ridiculous kung fu moves and a big part of the appeal just at beating people up with bicycles. Like there's always some weird stuff in the environment that you like pick up a bike, pick up a, a one of those orange road cones or like a an, a sign and then you get special like super attacks with all of these things you have so it's like you can beat someone to death with a bicycle mm-hmm. or you can use your special attack with it that you like really beat him to death with it you <laughs> this know? is a man of the yeah. law this <laughs> is yeah. Yeah. You're like well, drag- he's a private eye so he's oh, like he's a right. citizen yeah, yeah. Hands you can, like up. drag yeah. grab someone then drag them into a restaurant or a 7-eleven kind of thing and like Slam their head into a microwave and tell the employee to hit the button. <laughs> <laughs> and they win. That's, that's part of the. That's part Wait, of the thing. You can do that. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, there there are new like side quests that involve specific people, and then you can get them on your side during fights, which is like a super cool. <laughs> <and> weird. <laughs> so it's like, hey, I befriended this thing so that in case I ever fight any street yeah. punks, you'll help me out. There's oh, one no. in particular that comes almost every time, and he's super helpful and super funny. So I don't want to get into it because it's kind of a fun surprise, huh. but. So, Joe, yeah. I, I'm curious if it keeps up and it will be your game of the year. Yeah. It'd be amazing. I'm a, I'm a little scared of some of the uh, like the the tedium of those like following missions and mm-hmm. investigation stuff. I'm really early, so those things have been really easy and quick so far. Yeah. yeah. But just like the vibe of this game is really for me. That's yeah. awesome. Is it just PS4 right now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And the use Yakuza stuff eventually came to PC. Mm-hmm. I know. So mm-hmm. I assume this will be on that same timeline. It- you know, yeah, definitely yeah. possible. If past is precedent, that's great. Judgment review on the site, right? Yep. Awesome. Now's the tricky part. What's that? Now's when we transition to emails, Leo Vader. Uh oh. In a live format. How you feeling, buddy? Hang Give on. me vamp. Twenty seconds. <laughs> Can do. Uh, Jeff Cork, without getting into any specifics. Yes. Are you excited for the cover reveal next week on Tuesday? Yes. I'd imagine it's going live at 11 a.m. Mm-hmm. And I'd imagine next week on the podcast there will be folks here to talk about said game. That should mm-hmm. be interesting. Yes. I think you've said too much. That's valuable content right there. <laughs> You'll have one. Yeah. Yes. We're not, do not expect a mountain <laughs> of gameplay. Mm-hmm. More on the impression side of things. More developer focused mm-hmm. this time around. Can you say that again in a limerick form? <laughs> <laughs> I think I can, and I'll do it during our commercial break as we go to emails. Leo Vader.
And welcome back to the Game Informer Show. We're still here. We have some hot emails from folks. Folks are into podcast at GameFormer.com. Sorry, Vasquez. Make the show better. <laughs> wow. Yeah. They mm. actually did make the show better. Anything that you can think of that you think would make this show better, send it into podcast at GameInformer.com. We'd appreciate it. Uh, people send in questions, feedback, words of wisdom, games, trivia, dares, um, food suggestions, food suggestions, fishing fi- emails, fishing mm-hmm. yeah. emails, fish. fish. Do they send in Nashville hot chicken? Excuse me, sir. Do they send in <laughs> Nashville hot chicken? Uh, there is that? there is some nonsense you'll probably enjoy in here. Oh, day. great! Yeah. Sure you check the attachments you. on those emails. Thank you. Sometimes there could be some chicken in there. Yeah. There every once in a while, I do get an email that's just like subject line ambiguous, and then just a link, and it's like I know this. Could no. Be. But it could be somebody sending in something funny and related to Game Informer Then they'd as have well. a line of text. Has, right. it, has it ever been something funny? I never clicked through because I'm oh, scared yeah. of, yeah, I don't know, getting like hacked by don't, Russians don't or something. Don't click nonsense. through. Anyways, podcastinginformer.com. Uh, we, look, here's, here's how it works, Serial. Every email we get is good. The ones that are great, we read them on the show. But there's only one that's the best, and we're going to find it in this heap. And then we're gonna, what are we going to do with it, Hanson? We're going to honor where that person's from by putting a pin in the big board. And we're going to be doing that live? Is that right? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. So yes. you have to figure out where it is on the map. Oh, no! <laughs> Normally this is So Hans is going to gravitate toward people from New York and Texas. <laughs> yeah, and that's right. Another giant. Uh, yep, that's about it. Australia I could probably nail. <laughs> Did you find Minneapolis on there? Oh, big time. Uh, yeah. okay. Here we go. First email, uh, Nick from Atlanta, friend of the show. Hello, GI Show. Uh, just checking back in to say that I counted 20 Switch sound effects during the Nintendo Direct during E3 2019. <laughs> like the snap, specifically? If you oh, count okay. the two Joy-Cons getting put into the grip during the Resident Evil 5 announcement, it's 22. More than I thought it would be. Right. That's, a, that's, that's a pretty high. deep-cut callback, but thank you for that. That's fun. Johnny from Massachusetts. It turns out people are still processing E3, which is only natural. That's, mm-hmm. E3, E3 is like... It, lingers it for is months. within us you know you know it does but at the same time too you know leo and i were talking a bit about it it's amazing how much hype deflates after like the first day and a half even like traffic wise it's like blah, 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 press conferences and then ah, i yeah, think i think especially now just because of like half the show or more leaks before the show now no not half a lot Mm-mm. the big beats man some of the biggest stuff so, uh, some of the biggest stuff yes but i, I reject the half notion but okay. bandai namco's biggest notes i i would say oh. well oh, yes geez. bandai namco is a special case anyways johnny from massachusetts he says hey visiting e3 this year i couldn't help but notice that a lot of the presentations reveals were cg only and that some big games were absent from the show floor for me, I was really looking forward to a new reveal from Capcom, like Marvel vs. Capcom 4, Resident Evil 8. Something would have been nice. Project Battle, whatever it's called. Yeah, what, what is that? They, they have a card game. A card game coming out. Yeah. Capcom Hearthstone, which has not officially been revealed yet, but they let <laughs> what the, uh, Mr. Man, what's his name? Maximilian Man, Dude. Yeah. yeah, stream it for hours upon like hours. Like eight hours. <laughs> Do you think that was an embargo mistake? or No. What? No, I don't. So they're letting this dude. It went on for eight hours. If it was an embargo mistake, it would have been down for. It but would have been down after one. Why somebody stream it for so long before the game's even acknowledged as well, existing? Why not? If you're if you're the the streamer, no, you, you've got the exclusive I, deets then, on this great game. But then for them game. to be like, this game doesn't exist. I don't. Yeah, right. That, that that's seems, the part that's yeah. frustrating. It's it, a weird disconnect. On yeah. Capcom's behalf specifically, it feels like yeah, there was a lot. There was a missing like big note there. Where and I, maybe it was because you know they've partnered a lot with PlayStation in the I past. Mean, and I think they are now for like Monster Hunter World Iceborne, and yeah. so it's a weird case, right? Where it's like, what stage are they going to go on? The easiest guess there is that the wires got crossed behind the scenes, and somebody made the deal, and not, not everybody knew it was going. You know, the left hand doesn't know what the right yeah, hand is doing. Maybe it's not technically Maximilian's fault that he did this, but there was a, at some point some oh. a disagreement about whether or not they would have they wanted sure. to let him. But all we know is the game anyway, doesn't exist. That yet. that yeah. game actually looks out, it looks pretty neat. I want to know It's nice that he made it himself, and it has no correlation to Capcom or any of their iconic <laughs> characters. And then he, and this is just a thing. Made. I didn't want to derail this, but I thought that was a very interesting development last no, week. No, yeah. it is yeah. interesting. Uh, let's see. Uh, so Johnny says, "Hey, my question is: What game or franchise did you hope to see in some capacity at E3, but it was not there? The oh. one that I think I was fully prepared for because it's been rumored for so long." It was the Metroid Prime trilogy on Switch. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But now they're that? probably saving it for like probably a Metroid Direct at some point, realistically, right? Where they say something of Metroid Prime Four and then also have the trilogy. That seems yeah. like a very short direct, but yeah, I guess they've done. No, they, they, they could package that. You do the teaser trailer and then you're like, mm. get. But wait, Metroid fans, there's right. way more you have coming. Doug Bowser come out wearing Samus Rand's helmet, like <laughs> take it off. <laughs> Ooh, walks into a wall, and trips. <laughs> yeah, Just I can see that. A, a five minute chastising of people for not buying a. Samus Returns were being as excited about <laughs> exactly, it as they could have been. Exactly, exactly. Uh, we gave you what you wanted, and you didn't want it. No one showed Joe up, Juba. did they? <laughs> exactly. What a jerk. Oh, what about you guys for, for biggest Man. missing thing? My, mine was Fable. 
Yeah. I was really like to the point where I was like, uh, my wife plays a lot of games, not uh, doesn't really watch a lot of E3 stuff, but I was like, I think I think you should actually watch the Microsoft press conference because there's we might see Fable. Oh, and yeah. it like it did happen. I was super bummed. Like, and I like the rumors that are swirling around that game of like who's developing it and stuff like that. I. If Fable exists, I really want to see what it looks like and, and where it's I going. think it's pretty clear that, yeah, Playground's developed. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and that's super exciting to me. I like the idea of, like, traditionally a non-RPG studio, but mm-hmm. is open. And this is all, you know, rumor, conjecture. Oh, it's concerned. totally happening. Yeah, yeah but I want to at least have that asterisk on it. But, like, that, I want to see what that is, and I was hoping to have seen it at E3 this year. At okay. the same time, messaging-wise, I think you get it, where, like, they want to have something big for the next E3. Like, coming up on Project Scarlet, is reveal the new name, we need some new tentacle. You, you want to save yeah. all the power for the next gen. That's that's right. when it all goes down, and right? There, you there, can yeah. you can do the, the lull year fine, and the, save all the ammunition, get ready to fire. That's what's going to happen. I would but, say that's probably why we got so many CG trailers. I'm guessing that was a yeah. lot of developers who didn't want to show their games yet being like coerced into doing s- of announcing basically, but saying like, "Hey, this is our next gen thing. We're, we're not ready to like talk Elden about Ring it. and stuff." Yeah, like yeah. clearly, yeah. Well, Elden, you know, given From's timelines, I, Elden Ring won't be next. It'll it'll be out quarter one next year. That's Just if yeah. they, I mean, they have a like, I know From, you know, they they have a very uh, okay. I know from From. They mm-hmm. have a very. Th- their cycle doesn't really change. It's like, let's do the CG trailer now, mm-hmm. then we'll have gameplay this month far down the line, and then we'll have the game. And it's what they pretty it? much never break from that cycle. It could happen, but is, are they that's every my other, prediction. Are they every other year at this point? Do you know off the top of your head? <sighs> it's like every year now. I mean, right? we get something. So Dark Souls 2 was 2014. Bloodborne was 2015. Wow. Okay. Dark Souls 3 was 2016. And then I think they took a couple years off the first Sekiro, which is this year. I think that, that was like the big scap. Okay. They had. Yeah, yeah, so they, they're on it. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, just, I'm just, you know, again, that's just a prediction. But given, yeah. given from the time we see a CG trailer for their games, it's generally right. like six right. months out from that. It would be fun. Uh, you guys write features for the website, right? Mm-hmm. I've heard I of it. So. I would love a feature that's just, hey, here, realistically, here's every studio slash game for next gen at this point that you can just put the pieces together. It's like oh. Rocksteady's game, clearly next gen. You know, just like connecting those dots. Sure. Like if they're not at E3 this year, Probably next gen, right? Uh, Warner Brothers Montreal, another studio that's been missing in action mm-hmm. for uh, feels like a lifetime at this point. Clearly next gen at this point, right? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, why, why show your hand too early? You know, we got we got yeah. hype to build. Anyway, I think for me it was actually um, crazy and crazily enough, Etrian Odyssey for Switch. <laughs> oh, but they just didn't the last one come out not that long ago. Yeah, they got the 3DS yeah. entry. You could tell they kind of like phoned it in on the 3DS entry. It was good. But it, like it was just basically the greatest hits of Etrian Odyssey, right, and I want right. to see the console version of this game. I've wanted that forever. Yeah. Okay. So this is exciting to me. If there's anything that gets me to get a Switch, it'll be that game. Not. Me. not I know that okay. sounds right. that sounds so silly. You I know. said you're getting a Switch like a thousand times on this podcast. It's happening. No, it's not. Uh, when I bring it in, I'll bring in the I'll bring in the box, Hanson. And you haven't know. even played Stardew Valley yet. You're right. I haven't. What kind of fake ass gamer boy? Fake. Ass. I think in the past for me, I would have <laughs> said Advance Wars, but with Wargroove <laughs> having come out and <laughs> kind of me slowly realizing that I think if they were to release one, they would probably change it up to make it more like Fire Emblem y and more like melodramatic. And I don't know that I would, you know, yeah. be too much into that. So yeah. I was, I was uh, about to say I, I was proud of you for giving up hope on Advance Wars, but you're clearly still no, holding on to something. I've, I've given up on in, like what. In, Getting back the advanced words that I want from them. If yeah. they do bring it back, it's going to be very different. It's going to be closer to maybe Days of Ruin. Um, but I think I I kind of wanted to see more like just straight up ports of old Zelda games, which is a weird thing to say. Like I wanted to see Wind Waker. I wanted to see mm. Twilight Princess. I want like something like Skyward Sword mm-hmm. or like hey, here's a bunch of like the older Zelda games coming in. But I know that a lot of that was usurped by Link's Awakening. Yeah, sure. and I think didn't Shay do an interview with Anuma where Numa said like basically never expect Skyward Sword to be ported away from the Wii because yeah. it's so difficult. It, yeah, it's just, I, I, mean, I don't I, know. Like, I would rather just have a version well, where you're using, like, the right analog stick or something. Yeah, and of, that's that's what Onuma shot down. I mean, maybe yeah. we'd see Skyward Sword on Switch someday, but it would be full motion control using right. the Joy-Con. But, like, Which that, is doable. That version of the game where yeah. you just control it with the right analog stick? Probably not going to happen. I mean, it, it seems like that's just never going to happen. Well, then at that yeah. point, you couldn't even port the Switch because how would you do the handheld mode? Well, I guess you're right. You can detach the But even then, like, like Skyward Sword notwithstanding, there are, they could have supported, you know, those Wii U versions yeah. over to Switch. I'm embarrassed to admit I would probably buy those again, even yeah, though I played both of them on <laughs> Wii U. Yeah. How about the new Harry Potter game? Oh, yeah. I would have right. liked to see that. Yeah, the the rumored Harry Potter game. That's that may next gen as well. Yeah. yeah. It's fun. Uh, let's see. Lucas Patricio from Sao Paulo, Brazil says, Hey, Ben and crew, in the last episode, you were talking about famous people. You met at E3, and I think I have a story to share. Ooh. I was about to watch Cyberpunk 2077, the behind the 
closed doors presentation in the City Project Red meeting room on the last day of E3. As you guys know, the place was packed. I waited in the <laughs> bar-like lobby until mm-hmm. they call us into the small theater. I found my seat and watched people came in. And for some reason, some people were sitting on the floor and standing up. They overbooked it, I thought, but something was a bit off. A very particular smell started to take over the room. <laughs> Excuse me? I was feeling a little dizzy and started to look around. And then, from my surprise, I found the origin of the smell just behind me. When I looked back, I saw a face that I'd never think to see at E3. Snoop Dogg? Mike Tyson. <laughs> a oh. smell. This he was cheering for everything the poor developer while the poor developer was talking. Uh, are you guys ready to... Yeah! Uh, Tyson <laughs> was all over the place. <laughs> I was surprised of how upbeat he was while watching the Cyberpunk demo. The demo started and the developer went through the crazy RPG elements and menus and all that stuff. Uh, and then he was showing options and customization. And then Mike Tyson says, what the F am I doing here? Let's get out of here. And then Tyson and another six people stand up and leave the room. A complete silence took over the marijuana smelled room. Uh, and then I got it why the room was so full. People started to take the seats while the developers were totally uncomfortable asking sorry while Mike Tyson and his crew left the place. Poor guy. I saw in his eye, the developer, the disappointment because he knew that he had a great joke 20 minutes in where there's literally a part of the demo that involves a boxing gym. And I'm sure this presenter, yeah, he's totally right, was probably planning for that moment of like Mike Tyson seeing this robot boxer. This is going to be great. No go. After the presentation, I talked to a friend that worked at CD Projekt Red, and he told me that Tyson uh, was a little bit wasted and decided to sleep in the room next door. So <laughs> everyone's having a good time there at E3. <laughs> All right. That is quite the tale. It's a good story. Uh, you know what turned it around? He attached a picture of himself uh, in the CD Projekt thing, oh, and really? Mike Tyson was sitting behind really? him. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's he awesome. Really did. Unless it was the Photoshop of the century. No, hey, you can, you can, but hey, I'm gonna, I was yeah. going to say, I don't know, but if he, if he yeah. sends uh, photo evidence, uh-huh. then, uh, that's that's... All right. That's the beauty of E3. Uh, yeah. You know, one day you're, you wake no, up I mean, and I know for that. a game, and then Mike Tyson's ready to see a Cyberpunk 2077 demo. I know that definitely. Yeah. 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 You know, it's actually, that's probably not even that weird on the scale of crazy yeah. E3. Yeah. You right. remember my big celebrity sighting, right, Hanson? Which one's that? Uh, in the mic, in behind, you know, where you had to be pressed to get past in the Microsoft booth, I saw Steven Spielberg walking around. Oh. And I told you, <laughs> and you went and like scouted it out for. I like, ran and yeah. sta- I stood by the exit waiting for him to come out. He so never came out. Him. No, he never came out. Yeah. He, he was definitely he there. He, he was still there. Some he ran say off to he's still wandering those halls. I didn't make that up just to like. <laughs> it was it was very exciting for me too. It was very tough to convince you know Ryan. You're like, no, I need to not edit video D three <laughs> for like a thirty minute window. I need to stand by this exit <laughs> and awkwardly pretend to run into Steven Spielberg. You need to get your like little. E- T bike, the mm. Amblin license plate on it, just driving around E three. <laughs> I've never seen that film. <laughs> Come on, shut up. I never have. Oh, it scared you when are, you were a kid. Yeah, right? I was too scared oh, as a kid, and yeah, I have he, never watched. He, it. You should watch pieces. it. It holds up. I don't okay. think it holds up, but I think as a Spielberg yeah. acolyte, like like he is, mm-hmm. uh, it doesn't it's hold up. Very strange really? omission. I don't think it does. No, I watched it like within the last five or six years. I still cried. How do you explain you that? Home. Yeah. What do you want? I, I don't know. We first we argued about Harry Potter. Now we're not connecting on mm-hmm. ET. I don't know what's happening. We'll today. never. We'll Kyle, we'll Kyle and me are just uh, there's a rift between us. Yeah. Zane from Bluff City, Tennessee says hello, editors. I recently bought a few uh, cheap games under five dollars and had a blast with some of them. I wish he was more specific. That's awesome. Uh, oh, oh, one of them here. He says it was Pac Man Two Fifty Six on PS Four. I guess he had a great time with. Mm. Wasn't that that free game on mobile? <laughs> I don't, I don't I'm know. Confused. That. I'm not familiar with that title. Anyway, Zane says, what are some cheap games that you bought recently that you ended up having lots of fun with? Oh, recently? Mm-hmm. Well, I got I got a copy of... Well, I forget recently. Yeah, I like back in the days when you could still go to Circuit City, they had a bin of $5 games. I got Ico out of that bin. Oh, which wow. Which was amazing. That was fantastic. And that, that was and the game was already rare at that point. I just like really lucked out and got a $5 copy of Ico. Nice. So basically what I like to do oh, no. is uh, when I'm feeling when I'm feeling frisky and I want a cheap game, oh, no. I go to Steam and I just search by RPG Dungeon Crawler category oh, no. and I just search down the whole list. And you can find all kinds of garbage, but there's some real gems in there too. You can just pull them out of the bucket. You're like, man, this game is completely unbalanced. All these classes are unbalanced, but it's just like, you know, there's some good Dungeon Crawlers deep in the muck in there. <laughs> like uh, Elman Age Original. Or Elman Age Gothic or two Wizardry likes that are just like completely obscure titles. Wizardry likes Kyle. Wizardry. You're familiar with Wizardry? You know, you go I've, down the dungeon, you, hit, you whack things. Uh huh. Yeah. You've heard of the world, but have you heard of a like? <laughs> I don't know. They existed before. Uh, Wizardry likes were, live, were a thing before Harry Potter. Okay. Prove it. No, Harry Potter invented Wizardry. He totally did. Uh, I remember getting 
for under five bucks back in the day, a game I'd never heard of called Smuggler's Run on PS2. Like, mm. oh, some racing game? No big deal. Anyway, that Rockstar was behind it, and then I ended up really loving that game. I, I think like, I, I got my first Fire Emblem game on like a big deep discount after seeing it in the demo for Walmart. Where it's yeah. like, hey, let's, these 2D animations look fantastic. And oh, it happens to be on sale for like 75% off. Look at that. Okay. I, also, I also got Mark of Cree out of that bin, which is another Ooh. underrated. Yeah. yeah. Amaz- animations are amazing in that Speaking game. Of good animations. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Hmm. Um, let's see, the lead animator at Sucker Punch working Ghost of Tsushima, uh, he was the animator on that one. Hmm. The ghosts. Excuse me, Dan? Um, <laughs> the ghost of E3. <laughs> Where's the game? That's true. Hey, you know what, um, you know what game is cheap, Dan? I have no idea. StarCraft II is free. The yeah, Wings the, of the Liberty the campaign yes, and the, Liberty the multiplayer is, yes. is free, which yeah. is insane because that is so much great content there. It is. It is. What, what does that have to do with... Is this, this, this cheap a, stuff. Is this lead, lead to the next question? Dota 2 is free. It play. does, actually. Okay. I wasn't planning on it, but yes. I just okay. wanted to talk about StarCraft a little more. Really? I love, I'm love. i getting so back into it, Dan. It's so I, much fun. Are we, are we going to have that match? Oh, Are you ready? We're gonna have the match. So I have okay, good. I can't wait. Let me practice a little bit more, and then we're gonna have the match. <laughs> you guys should do a video on it, though. Yeah, right? I'll take you oh, out. Of course, we'll video it. And yeah. I'll take out Jason Schreier. Uh, I'm just taking out all the StarCraft <laughs> champions. Yeah, all right. All right, here we go. J- uh, Joseph from Gresham, Oregon, God's country, says, mm, "That could be." Uh, it says, "Hey, with the rise of auto battlers, do you think Blizzard will make their own version? They didn't hop on the battle royale train, but this style of game seems much more their style. I hope to see a StarCraft-inspired auto battler." They already have Hearthstone based on WoW, so I would like to see factions, races, archetypes based on StarCraft units. What would you like to see in the Blizzard Auto Battler? Specifically from the Blizzard Auto Battler, I guess yes. I, I would want it to be the Heroes of the Storm. I would I wouldn't want the whole thing. Yeah, the I would want thing. them to not abandon it after a couple of years. After <laughs> a few years. That's an interesting yeah. idea. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I, I do think that they are maybe a little more trepidatious about jumping into genres after Heroes of the Storm, which, I mean, it's still it's a good game, and I think that it still has like a like decent player base, but mm-hmm. it does not seem to have done the numbers that they wanted it to for a long time. I think um, auto but, auto battlers like instantly translate well to mobile, and you've yeah. got like the, not nearly the requirements uh, to develop from scratch because it's just like the templates there. You've got your IPs already. Look, Bro, all you, all you put them know, in a bag and shake yeah. it up and throw it out there. <laughs> Valve of all companies made one in what six months? Like it's complicated yeah. because they were Valve's units used in a mod mm-hmm. and then taken out of the mod to put back in their own game after the mod decided to go to the Epic Game Store, mm-hmm. and it's not there yet. The whole, the whole auto battler rise to power is just just insane and get, so fast. It's fascinating. Uh, I miss this part. We don't call them just auto chess clones. I or still auto call chess them likes. auto chessers, but uh, auto chess. Auto battlers becoming like auto the battlers, MOBA equivalent. People are people are gravitating toward that. Yeah, but mm. I don't know if it just like MOBA was inadequate at describing what a Dota like was. This is sort yeah. of an. I mean, there's plenty of auto battling games. They existed on mobile for a long time beforehand, and they don't have a good connotation. Yeah. Um, because they're just like, yeah, whatever, just put it on auto battle and go to sleep and, you know, pay money to win. Yeah. Which is not this category at all. This is a more, I don't know how, whatever. Yeah. It's a strategic it's experience. Like fan- it's like fantasy chess, basically. Do you like it? Sir? Yeah, it's okay. Like, yeah. I, I guess I haven't gotten deep enough to be, like, super obsessed with it, but from the rounds that I've played, it definitely feels like you are you are learning a lot of new math, let's say, of like, oh, okay, really? these things go together. You have to put these two units. If you have three of these, it combines into the stronger unit and resistances if you have like a trio of different pairs or something like it's it's a you lot You think of, the game design holds up, Dan? I think it's fascinating. I think, you know... Fascinating it, or like great game fascinating design? Fascinating and good game design. Okay. You look at it from like how RTS gave way to the MOBA because mm-hmm. you're like, well, let's make, it, let's make the, the RTS more accessible. Let's take the micromanagement out of it. You just have to manage one unit and we'll add some team play. So this is like, let's dial down again. What if you had no let's, Twitch reflexes involved? What if whatsoever? there's no management yeah. on the uh, on the Twitch side at all, and it's just strategy? And you're kind of watching units go at each same other. Same units, and the auto mm-hmm. that the units just fight themselves. But you got to figure out and plan how to make them and how to make combos and synergies. And I think it's rife for like development. These all the mm-hmm. versions out right now are very. I'm not gonna. I don't want to say bare bones in a negative way, but yeah, they're all using the same template and design. Yeah. And where they go from here is going to be the real interesting part. And, of course, we're going to see other players. I don't know if Blizzard will be one of them. I'd like them to be. You've got to figure they're working seems on likely. something. Yes. Yeah, who's better at iteration and development right. for an untapped genre than Blizzard? Yeah. It seems like a natural fit. But I'm sure other people are going to get into, and I'd like to see some big differentiation. And I think we might start seeing that in the coming weeks, actually. Val's version is supposed to get, you know, Dota Underlords is actually supposed to get Underlords, which will dictate how you play before the game begins. You can pick mm-hmm. one. Anyway, there's all kinds of stuff there. But yeah, yeah. For, to, in regards to this specific question, I'd like to see all the Blizzard IPs under one roof for that. I think that'd be very interesting. Maybe the evolution Blizzard can make is they'll make it manual chess. <laughs> so you have to control that? your units? Yeah. Units, this is live. We can't 
So like a oh, so like a so like, yeah. an, so like an RTS. Yeah, that's the genre <laughs> I'm looking for. How about for. a MOBA? <laughs> yeah. Uh, scale of one to ten. Somebody tell me how interesting this is. I learned uh, this past weekend that uh, the Dakota word Dota means the merging of multiple things. The Dakota word. Yes. Like the, the Indian the Native tribe. American, yes. Hmm. Isn't Six? that interesting? Because like the Dota is the ultimate merging of Blizzard and Valve, right? I mean, it's just a. I mean, it's stand. It's an acronym. I understand that, but just like coincidentally, <laughs> etymologically, Dota works. Isn't that fascinating? All right, I'm supposed to tell you on a scale of one to ten how yes. fascinating that is. Yes, I give it a three. Leo, uh, in the chat, <laughs> I need four. to know a uh, scale of one to ten how fascinating my yeah. uh, Dakota Dota etymology lesson is. Razzmatazz like like gives right? it a four out of ten. Okay. Ooh, that's fine. <laughs> you are obsessed with etymology more than more than I most like people. It a lot, it's a good yeah. topic. Uh, tell Rasmussen not to leave a review on iTunes. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> but tell his friends. Yes, please. Uh, Mr. Hardy of Seattle writes, Howdy, folks. Uh, a couple weeks back... <laughs> Just nail that Seattle accent, i got to say. <laughs> Howdy, <laughs> folks. It sounded more like Slinky Dog. <laughs> What's his name? Slinky Dog? No. Uh, Jim Barney? Anyway. You know what, what in the world are we still even talking about here? I don't want to get into it. Sorry, more reviews are in. Got a few 10 out of 10s here. Oh, what? <laughs> wow! Holy cow! Run, Divide, don't walk! Device number yeah, That's, that's exciting. Factory. Wait, I can ask for validation on anything at this point? Isn't that point? crazy? That's what we're doing alive. Oh, Give us more 10s okay. out of 10s in the chat, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, anyways, uh, Slinky Dog here. No, Mr. Hardy writes, Howdy, folks. A couple weeks back, you were discussing which characters had appeared in the most video games. I was stunned, yes, stunned, to learn that Sonic the Hedgehog has been in approximately 2,561 <laughs> games. <laughs> yeah, I guess, Jim. Uh, close. He, meanwhile, he says for interesting facts about Sonic, he's a hedgehog, he's mostly blue, he goes fast to defeat his enemies. Maybe there's more to him, but I doubt it. <laughs> These are some very fascinating <laughs> But stuff. I would like you to ponder the other end of the spectrum. What video game character has the most fleshed out backstory? Not the game, but the character in the game or games. Put another way, whose Wikipedia entry is the longest? This is a great question. Is this like, a, there's, there's not an actual, you don't have data for longest Wikipedia entry, right? No. Okay. I don't. Maybe I, Big Chat, Boss. Chat, by the way, jump in on this yeah. one. Yeah. I, Big I, Boss. I'm going to have to go yeah. with Serial. I wrote Big Boss as well. Yeah. yeah. It has to be, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because at first you're like, okay, maybe because Solid he, Snake, but then like Big Boss has been in more fleshed out games at this point. And he's been a, a part of the timeline longer than even Solid Snake has. Yeah. Right, right. I think Nathan Drake might be up there too because you get to no. see you get to see into his childhood and like you get to. That's every game. But that's going to be a short Isn't Wikipedia it? entry though. That's yeah. going to be like, oh, he's had some like rough spots in his life versus like Big Boss where they need to explain what the hell yeah, is going no, on I, with that. Yeah. Big yeah. Boss for sure. I'm just thinking of other examples because we all came up with Big Boss. But mm. Nathan Drake, I know about his relationship with his uh, brother. I know a lot about him and his wife. I've seen him and his child. I've seen his uh, his adopted father, Sully. Like I know about their relationship a lot. I'm just saying there's a lot there. Yeah, right. but emotionally, I, I, I'm sorry, like there's politics and stuff to explain with Big Boss or his, you know, his relationship with his wife is like sometimes... He likes adventuring a little too Guys, much. Guys, I'm agreeing I, with you I, that Big Boss is the winner. Well, I'm saying okay, then Nathan Drake is a then good. We're done. I think other I think he option. has an interesting backstory, like because there's two different things. Whereas a lot of the backstory for Nathan Drake is like who he is as a person, versus Big Boss is like hit. Like hit, Nathan Drake's Wikipedia entry isn't going to be that long, but it's very interesting yeah. because a lot of the notes are like very human notes of like that flesh out who he is, versus Big Boss where it's like a long plot synopsis of the Metal Gear series, basically. I, I agree with you guys well, that Big Boss I is think the you're better mistaken. <laughs> I think you're mistaken, Kyle. It's I'm just Big trying boss. to flesh out like there's two separate criteria <laughs> sure, there. Sure. Maybe it's a pork or whatever character you're talking about earlier in the show, the Harry Potter pork. Mark. Tonks? Yeah. <laughs> Mad Eye Moody. Yeah. Can I get some validation on the no, Harry Potter No, no, we're good. Okay, uh, this, stuff? No, the see, chat was completely on your side, Kyle. Thank you. Wow. As Joe. well as me. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> uh, Django says Lara Croft in the YouTube chat. I know a little bit about her but childhood. I guess the reboot, does that complicate things? Well, it I guess it the, adds more link to the Wikipedia entry. <laughs> I guess it does, like reboot timeline versus base timeline. Yeah. I mean, they're you different know, They're different Lauras, right? There's maybe um, some mortal, maybe yeah. Scorpion. I was thinking that or too. Or like Shang Tsung, or not Shang Tsung, uh, uh, Liu Kang. But I think mm -hmm. may, maybe it's one of those things where the, the overall story of Mortal Kombat probably has a lot of yeah. lore involved. I don't know that any individual character would have it obscenely long. Mm -hmm. I okay. didn't talk to you about it, and we'll, we'll be cryptic about it and stuff, but... I don't, I don't think I've mentioned the ending to Mortal Kombat 11. What a delight. I'm going to fight so hard for that for like one of the moments of the year. Like yeah, there well, is some insane stuff uh, that yeah, is I just like, I, I became a fan late in my life, right? Within the last year of Mortal Kombat and still the ending of the game is like, this is so epic. I cool. agree. I think there will be some resistance in terms of like, oh, we don't want to spoil stuff in the, in the magazine. You but can I feel like it. we can write around it. Yeah. Like, you I can just use the word dope. I mean, it'll, be, what I mean. it'll be really late that, at that time. Come on. Like yeah. spoilers have a limit. 
Nah, I don't know. It says the <laughs> you, guy who spoiled something out. earlier in the oh, episode. They're, they're yeah. about her thing. Anyways, uh, Adam S. from Indianapolis, Indiana. Cool it. We got it. <laughs> All right, we got it. We got it. <laughs> what is going on? Well, look, you know, okay. they use yeah. the word India a lot here. Anyways, hi, Game Informer. <laughs> India, Indiana, Indy was the dog's name. <laughs> you should change your name, Indianapolis. Oh, where's Reeves? We got to get him down here for his Sean Connery impression. He's for not a single line. <laughs> He's not allowed on live shows. Uh, <laughs> hi, anyways, hi, game informer. Bully is one of well, my. This, all- is, this is above the way. <laughs> Bully is one of my all-time favorite games. I never hear anything oh, about God. a sequel at all, except for. <laughs> Jack's no, back. No. Kevin's Jack back. Speaking of Ben Reeves, no. not, he says not even a rumor. That's not true. There are rumors about Bully too. But uh, oh, anyways, boy. do you think it'll ever receive a follow up? Uh, probably not. But is there a game that has ever been released that you loved that never received a sequel? For sure. uh, it's obvious. tougher than you think because at this not. point, like, oh, okay, go for it. But Bloodborne, obviously. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> then you look down at your feet. Mine. Mine is. Uh, I'm so sad about it. Mine's more obscure. I think it's Drill Dozer. Right. I genuinely like it's a game freak game. They're busy with Pokemon all the time. Drill Dozer was not like a big commercial success. I don't think there'll ever be a sequel. But there's an interesting story in that game of like you're a crime family, and it, the game starts with the leader of the crime family, the father, going into a coma, and the daughter taking over the business. So that's what the game is: is you're taking over your father's business of crime. Yeah. And then at the end of the game, the father wakes up, which is like an interesting setup for the sequel. Like, Ooh. what does he think of the daughter? How did she do while he was in a coma? But we'll never see the the next part of that story, which is yeah. Hard. Remember when Game Freak announced Town? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember yeah. how we've heard nothing about that it? Was, uh, yeah. Remember, there was one screenshot in Famitsu, all right? So oh. it's still way underway. Apparently, that's yeah. the uh, that's the argument in defense of Town. Where's my Town sequel? Yeah, where's, where is City. Town? Yeah. Do you think Town is actually still happening? Like, yeah. That's a real question. I, we, uh, saw, excuse me. we saw like two minutes of gameplay. Like, did that's you? Def- yeah. yeah. Yeah, they absolutely did. When? They showed Dan, you a... got to watch the directs, because when we were live streaming, you didn't think they had shown any Link's Awakening gameplay either. Mm. Well, that's true. You can't see his <laughs> hats are slowly drooping, and you can't see. No, I mean, no, no. That was par- prior. Okay, that but, was. I not mean, a... to be fair, yeah, we haven't heard anything, but I think they've shown more than okay. we realized. Okay. Yeah. Did they say 2019 for town? I want to. I think they, they did. did. Yeah, that seems like a mistake. Um. Anyways, uh, I don't know. For me, uh, I really had to search my brain. It's like I feel like so much. I feel like the game industry has been doing a good job of giving fans what they want and making surprising sequels out of the blue. The one that came to mind is Metal Warriors for the Super Nintendo, that, that Lucas game. Mm. It's awesome. Mm. Uh, and they Warriors. never made a sequel. Yeah. You play Metal Warriors? I have not heard. I have not even heard of this. It's game. very good. The, the the story is is solid too. But the real star of the show in my mind, and we put it on replay a long time ago with a ROM from PlayStation, mm-hmm. is uh, you know split screen competitive. Okay. All right. And it's like the best feeling, especially back in that era. You're in a mech, okay. side scrolling, right? Okay. You can get out of the mech, and then you're just a tiny little guy with a jetpack. You can fly around and then go into another mech on the map. And all the mechs are crazy. There's like a spider mech. There's a ball mech. So like, of, so like Master Blaster? Yeah, but imagine you know getting into max. multiple things and then competitive. It's cool, man. It's okay. Cool. All right. Max, uh, Chrome Hounds, I think, is <laughs> oh, doing really? Well, I would like a secret to Chrome Hounds. What's the deal with Chrome Hounds? Uh, it was a really cool mech game. I think it nailed the variety of like different machines basically and making you feel like you are operating something that feels v- very tanky but or light depending on the on the build uh i think a lot of that game maybe that game's problems would have not been as heavy today because a lot of it was that it was a multiplayer title mm. and i think uh, at the time it was one of those things where it's like yeah the multiplayer campaign is mostly you against, playing against bots and you know the multiplayer is just like you're trying to fight people and there's this whole faction thing going on but i think now i think they could pivot that series in a way that would be more interesting to to a lot of people. Yeah, right on. Uh, and also, from has a more cachet now, so mm. I think more people would be on board for something like, "Hey, from soft is making a mech game." I think would be. Although, but exciting. it's not the one you expect, Armored yeah. Core fans. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> they still exist. They're always asking for the Oh yes, Armored they Core definitely game. exist. Yeah. Uh, Paolo from Chicago. Colt Cabana's country. Interesting. He says, hey, I got into Monster Hunter World this year on PC. Yeah. First thing I did was download the high-res texture pack. There's a lot of talk amongst the pundits uh, that there will probably be next-gen releases for games like Final Fantasy VII Remake and Cyberpunk 2077. So have we all forgotten that next-gen is backwards compatible and they can patch in enhancements? Or is cynicism just baked into all of us at this point and it's assumed publishers are going to gang charge us and make us buy <laughs> current gen games again oh, as no. upgraded versions. Not gang charge. Don't gang charge us. I think that this is a it's a 
it is the conversation to have right now at this point when confused about what's going on with next gen and the line between current gen and next gen. Do you understand the question, Dan? What the hell is a gang charge? <laughs> you not listen to the Game older. Informer show? No, no, no. That's fine. So, I do. That's fine. You don't need to do it. It's a Ben Reeves bit. But the question oh, is, right? If okay. So the <laughs> Final Fantasy VII remake... Do you expect this version to be playable on a PS5 and then you'll be able to download high-res textures or more likely are they going to make the next-gen enhanced version and sell that to you for I think that's bucks? actually a really good question. Yeah. And I think that's going to be happening on a... That's a much more macro question. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, what does PS5 want to do, right? We know it's backwards compatible. We but do know that, but we... Yeah. And it's, it could go either way at this point. It just takes one publisher being so generous that no one can ignore it. Mm. And I don't know if anyone's going to be I think noble enough. Maybe uh, CD Projekt Red, they seem cool, right? Like, <laughs> maybe Early on, I could see there being a lot of differences between publishers. Like, I, I could see Square totally doing that versus like... Milking? Yeah. Uh, and I think well, eventually there's like going to be like an accepted practice <laughs> where people latch on to, you know, whatever the nicest one uh, is. And so I eventually expect it. I, I, the thing is, is that will that happen by the time that stuff phases out, right? Like, we'll, we're going to see a lot of maybe double down like, or double dipping on, on those entries. But by the time people say, like, yeah, you should just upgrade and get the PS4 version, yeah, and you can just play it all, with all the enhancements on PS5, will that be by the time that the PS4 is no longer relevant? Yeah. I, I don't think that's going to happen. I think it would be great if it did happen. I think they could have done it in the last gen. I think the 360 games that port, got ported to Xbox One, they probably yeah. could have done that, but they didn't. I think right. that decision is going to happen in a room with a lot of people in suits. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? yeah, right. Yeah. And they're going like to look money. at some charts, and it's, the charts are going to have numbers on them, and it's, they're going to look at the one that mm -hmm. goes up. <laughs> That's true. And there's going to be a big uh, banner that says gamers, and they're going to put a red slash through it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this G one's not for the fans. Yeah. G from Norway says, all right, we know Final Fantasy VII is episodic. Let's say there's four to six episodes. That's a lot. God. Uh, and episodic, it's a weird terminology. You know, They say it's like a full it's game. It's true. Anyways, but they say each game will be the size of a full yes, game, all they that stuff. Have, they have. Anyways, uh, does this mean that diehard fans and collectors will need to buy four to six different deluxe editions? And if every one of those is around three hundred and thirty dollars, that's potentially two thousand mm -hmm. dollars to get the collector's editions for all of Final Fantasy VII. That's Assuming it's four to six games, I think is a stretch. Let's assume three to four. I'd say four. I, I wouldn't be surprised by four to six. If I had to throw a ball, really? right? Four now. to six games? Isn't, that, isn't Final four. Fantasy VII like super long? It's a long yeah. game. Aren't they, it's a aren't long they, game, and aren't they're they only stretching doing... it out for these games. Yeah. Yeah. Like, how, <laughs> what percentage of the game is leaving Midgar? Uh, probably after Midgar, it's probably sixty-five to seventy percent. Seventy. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> you rest your case. Yeah. I'd say four. I'd say they do this in four. I think it, yeah, it's possible. I mean, I'd say four would be like the bare it's minimum. Almost, it's really hard to ballpark this because they haven't even started like mapping out their own charts, right? I would, so how the I hell would are we supposed to just nail it down at five? I, okay. I, I sort of think. But the question is, deluxe editions. Yeah. Do you yeah. think that that's yeah, BS for the fans that they're gonna have to buy this? Yes. This, this is. Mm. Well, they don't have to. They should we not just, be surprised at all. Yeah, Blizzard <laughs> does this for every one of their... You yeah. got to pay, what, $40 to play your favorite Final Fantasy on your phone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it like is... Like, Blizzard did it for all three uh, versions of StarCraft 2. Right. That's true. But those... And, if, and if Square sees them as all as full price Final Fantasy games, there's yep. no reason for them to not to really... I think it's a little bit too early to be angry if it is like, hey, the second game is four hours. It's just right. clouds past. And it's like, I, I understand that. The whole but... concept of this being episodic, I think mm -hmm. you're right. They are all supposedly full games, which sort of takes us out of this episodic connotation that they're going to get. But mm -hmm. I think that, I think we still need proof, uh, honestly. I think we need to see that first game, and then we can judge, all right? I, I mean, I could see them say, like, hey, this first big one, we want to blow it out. Like, we want to have, like, this $250 version, and then subsequent versions. Yeah, this is, like, the deluxe version, but it's not as, like, expensive. But also, they have, like, you know, they could, here's Cloud, here's Tifa, here's Barrett. Like, yeah. they could this have... Is, this is, like, one of the most nostalgic IPs of all time. They're going to... They're going to have those opportunities for fans to pay what they want to pay, to put uh, it in a nice way. Speaking of which, I had this hypothetical for Joe the other day, and Joe gave me the rare. That's a great question, which is oh. Final Fantasy VII Remake, part one, first mm -hmm. thing that they release. What will the DLC be? Because are they going to do story mm. DLC? Like, how would that work? What's it going to be? Here's a clown nose for cloud. Clown nose for cloud. Maybe you can get weapons from other Final and Fantasy Do we know games? yet if your character is going to carry over from, from game to game? No. Okay. <laughs> I think what, do you be, want, what do you want me to say? Like, I think it'll be like Final Fantasy nostalgia stuff. Yeah. Like, so not story content? I don't think so. Yeah. What if I only buy the fourth version? Do I get all the characters from the earlier games? I assume so. Yeah. We, look, there's, there's a million a questions. questions that there's so many questions. Yeah. Okay, here's another good thing from Final Fantasy VII. <sighs> um, let's see. Oh, I don't know who this is from. I feel sorry. You can just say it was uh, for me. 
Okay, uh, Serial Vasquez wrote in, you obviously know that uh, where Bugenhagen's legs are in Final Fantasy VII, uh, there is only a green hemisphere. <laughs> this is Red Thirteen's grandpa. Uh, there is a theory that this is actually a float materia, which would be the only float materia in that entire game. <laughs> this isn't mentioned anywhere, it's just a fan theory. And I think that's right. a very fun idea. <laughs> is that Bugenhagen like, like, cut his legs off for the sake of this giant float materia? <laughs> Sorry, that was a really good question. Thanks for writing it. Yeah. 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 I think it's very smart. Uh, I didn't understand a lot of those words as someone who hasn't played a lot of Final Fantasy VII, but sure. Yeah. yeah. <gasps> Bugenhagen's a noble character. Uh, let's see. Uh, next email is Colin from Woodridge, New Jersey. And he says, Hello, crew. I watch a show called State Plates, where singer Taylor Hicks visits each state in America and fills a dinner dish that shows food <laughs> most iconic to that state. What? It's usually in the format of one appetizer, one entree, two sides, and a dessert. New Jersey's plate was spot on. Below is the plate for Minnesota's episode. How accurate is this? Is hot, this is, is it, like a pretty, TV it's gonna be, it's thing? This isn't like a five-minute YouTube video? Can we guess? It's going to be hot dish, right? Cheese curds. No, each one is a two-hour film. On it's going to be hot oh, dish. Wow. Hot cheese, dish cheese, cheese curds is Wisconsin. Cheese curds is Wisconsin, you hack. That's what I just said. Yeah, I know. I'm looking at this story, boy. Leo, why didn't you... I got a story up. for you, Harry. Cheese curds are in Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> I've only eaten them in Minnesota. They have so. them here too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dan, yeah, correct. Hot dish is side number two. Yeah. Do we have other guesses for Minnesota meals? Has so, anyone said cheese curds yet? <laughs> I'm going. Lute Why don't you just Lute give them a juicy Lucy? There, right? the juicy there is no lutefisk. All right. Yeah, juicy, juicy Lucy, Lucy not on awesome. here. Yeah, that's mm. not, that's too modern. It is. Mm. I, Cheerios. I think more natural. <laughs> more natural. natural. More natural Minnesota. A Apple. fish. Uh, I realize I'm asking fish. three people that aren't from Minnesota. Just, just <laughs> cup foods oh, brand muffins. I got I one. I yeah, got the hot yeah. dish. Um, but I, I am... Uh, Leo, Minnesota boy, you got any? Just have them visit Caribou Coffee. Oh, apricot or... candy. Dried apricot. Oh, that is so gross. Is that a South Carolina thing? No, that's, that's a Leo, Leo reference. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't you listen to the Game Informer show? Uh, game Charge? <laughs> what is a Game work of art of all time? Did Yoda die a peaceful death? Just Google like, no. tough. Anyways, <laughs> the answers are... <laughs> The appetizers, morel mushrooms. Oh, yeah. Sure. I don't know that is. That's fun. It's a, it's a funky mushroom out They're in the gross. woods. gross. People eat them. <laughs> My mom's obsessed with them. Uh, the entree, walleye, baby. Oh, okay. I asked if it was fish. Side one, delicious, underrated, lefsa. You guys had lefsa? No. No. Oh, you guys are missing out. Uh, dessert, bunt cake, which uh, I've never really connected with the Minnesota. That's sure. not connected to Minnesota. Yeah. Come on. I, it might be. What's lefsa? Can you describe that quickly? Lefsa, it's like a Swedish or Norwegian, sort of Scandinavian thing. I think it's Swedish. Um, and imagine like a really, really thin tortilla. Okay. And then, <laughs> but it's like a little bit sweet, but not really. But then you make up for that by the fact that you put yeah, a bunch of like butter. Taste it. Butter and cinnamon and sugar and then roll it up and it's just like this tube. It's like mm. a... You know, it's like a churro, but the... You don't have any money. You know, it's just... Left, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like a churro that you make from from leftover ingredients just, in your good. fridge. It's good. Just bring some in and we'll... we'll okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, am I missing out on a lot of, like, local Minnesota food? I, no, God. I feel like I've missed out completely on have it. Have you ever I wrapped to a walleye in Lefsa? <laughs> and hot dish? Don't stay away from the hot dish. I've lived okay. in Minnesota my whole life. I've never eaten a single one of those things. Lefsa? Walleye? No. I saw you eating a live walleye the other day. <laughs> He was eating a Wall-E action figure. Oh, I got it. I always get those two confused. <laughs> you have dyslexia in your eyeballs. <laughs> My wall eyeballs. Okay, RJ from the Dominican Republic. We have fun here. He, yeah, speaking of having fun here. He says, hey, if the Game Former Show podcast was developed into a movie, these would be my casting call oh, picks. God. Oh, God. Ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, can't. I haven't good. read these yet. I'm oh, sure really? I assume okay. they're good. Ben Hansen played by Paul Rudd. Okay. Love Why do you That's Paul very Rudd. complimentary. I love it. I love it. Dan Tack played by Jonah Hill. All right. Jonah Hill's good. Yeah, yeah, the right. thin, sexy Jonah Hill, though. Right. The cool yeah, Jonah Hill. The, the one yeah, that yeah, directed. Maniac. The director. Uh, the maniac. Yeah. yeah. Joe Juba played by Bruce Willis. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, you'll like this. Kyle Hilliard played by <gasps> a human turd. No. <laughs> <laughs> what is what is he? What else was he in? I don't know. <laughs> he's been in a lot of movies. Yeah. He, he, yeah. Yeah, he's always the butt of the joke, though. Oh, gotcha. Hey. Uh, no. Uh, Thomas Middleditch. Oh, yeah, I love that. That's great. Wait, who's that? Wait, who's Thomas Middleditch? Uh, who's the studio. that? Uh, Thomas Middleditch, he's the main guy he's Silicon in Valley. Silicon Valley. Oh, Very funny, great yeah, improviser. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, please come be uh, come to Game Informer sometime, please. Mm -hmm. I know you can hear yourself mentioned, so yeah. please, please come on the show. Thomas Middleditch, come on. Thomas Middleditch. He heard it. He heard it. He's coming. You've done, okay. He's coming. He's the one who does all those ads? Yeah, yeah. For, he does yeah, a lot of Verizon ads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I don't know who this is. Andrew Reiner, played by David Harbour. Who's David Harbour? He's uh, in Stranger Things. He's the, the the detective. Oh, okay. He's great. Kim Wallace, played by Lisa Kudrow. Sir, sure. okay. I like Lisa right. Kudrow. Imran Khan, played by Kamel Nanjiani. Well, Friend of the show. Do? That's a That's true. stretch. Yeah. <laughs> ben Reeves, played by <laughs> Jason Biggs. <laughs> <laughs> the cur- it's the curly hair. That's yeah. what it is. Jeff yeah. Cork, played by Jack Black. Sergio Vasquez, right. played by... How do you feel about this? Take a guess who it's going to be. Uh-oh. Who are you crossing uh, your fingers to not be? Jonah Hill. <laughs> oh, Joe, you are oh, Jonah okay. Okay. All right. That was my guess. Okay. Michael Pena. Oh. Okay. Is that fine? All right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll take that. Nice. J.B. Goldney, played by PewDiePie. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's and acting now. He's dead huh? on. Yeah. And Leo Vader, played by Adam Sandler. How okay. do you feel about that, Leo? He could pull it off. He could pull it off. I like that your response was like, he has to work up to my level. <laughs> who's uh, who's the bassist from the Gorillas again? Uh, uh, Murdoch? Mur- Murdoch? Yeah. That's JV. That's JV. That's JV. That's true. They should no, get an animated character. They'll have a character. hologram. <laughs> no, not even a hologram. Just okay. JV's just a, <laughs> such a cartoonish presence, exactly. you know? Exactly. Uh, Daniel Catano wrote in, wrote in just to acknowledge. Touch had a little fire. Uh, sorry, uh, wrote in just to acknowledge. Let's deep cut. All right, moving on. <laughs> wrote in to acknowledge that during the God Hand Super replay, uh, he really appreciated in episode six when somebody asked what f- juice should have been called, and Ben Reeves said sh- said it should be called frotter as a portmanteau of fruit and water. <laughs> oh, like an alternate name for the drink. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. I, d- I did not watch that episode, so they do. I like that. Uh, really uh, Luke from Holland, Michigan. You know this place, Dan? Yeah. Oh. Prove it. It's, it's <laughs> Are a you place allowed to go Michigan. back in that town? Yeah, okay. I'm pretty sure. We've got a hell in Michigan, too, you know? Yeah, I know. Yeah. And one in Frogtown. Can I just say the really good suggestions we got from the chat for the who would play us? Oh, oh yes. Okay. Yeah, sure. There's a couple here. Come Dylan on. Long says Paul Giamatti should be Joe Juba. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Billions and billions of dollars. <laughs> and Blop on, Blop on Twitch says Jeff Bridges for Jeff Cork. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good one. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's Thank good. You for your time. I'd like Thank to you. see uh, Jeff Bridges do Cork's. Not my problem. Yeah, it's freaking great. Anyways, so Luke from Holland, Michigan here, he says. Oh, so close. He said, what's up, Ben, Ben, Kyle, Reiner, Leo? Sure. Pretty close. Here's a little discussion starter. Which of these is better? Is the better game? Let's go around the table here, right? Leo, you want in on this crap? Sure. Great. <laughs> Leo, uh, AC Black Flag or AC Brotherhood? A Black Flag. Kyle, Mario Kart 8 or Double Dash? Uh, 8. Dan, uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 or Black Ops? Black Ops. Ooh, Incorrect. Sorry. Ah, like, wait, can I be wrong? No. <laughs> yeah, it actually. Sorry, I'll make a note of that. Uh, Serial, Oblivion versus Skyrim. Uh, Oblivion, personally. Saints Row 2 versus 3, Leo? The 3. Yeah. Come on. Mortal Kombat 9 versus 10, Dan Tack. Wait, me? Mm-hmm. Uh, 10. Okay. Correct. Gears of War versus Judgment. Unclear if he's talking about the first versus the fourth or if he's talking about the new Sega game. Let's I, assume it's the Sega game. <laughs> And who Here's is a war versus for? Judgment? Uh, yeah, you. Uh, maybe I haven't beaten Judgment, <laughs> so right now I'll have to go Gears of War. Okay. Uh, Leo Vader, Tony Hawk 2 versus 3? Three? 3. Uh, Kyle, Smash, Melee, or Ultimate? Ultimate. Mm. Mm. Serial, right. Uncharted 3 or 4? Uh, probably 4. Correct. Kyle, God of War 3 versus God of War, 2018? Uh, oh, uh, 2018. Okay. But with uh, a pause. Let's see. Dan... <laughs> mm. uh, Red Dead Redemption versus Red Dead Redemption 2. I haven't played 2 yet. You know that, and you deliberately asked me that. (laughs) Again, thank us, Gamer Boy. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen of the jury. I'm waiting for the PC version, Mm -hmm. which is coming on Stadia. Remember that Stadia symbol? Uh, Remember that Stadia symbol? Cut to the skeleton in tax chair. (laughs) (laughs) With a cowboy Uh, hat on him. uh, Let's see. Who's into this one? Uh, SSX3 versus Tricky. Uh, Tricky. I go three. Yeah. I think three's amazing. I haven't played it. The tricky's cleaner and more pure, but three's just so yeah. ambitious. I love it so much. Uh, yes, but three, I, I feel like it didn't really capitalize on the open world element of it enough. Okay, what? well, you're wrong, but what about SSX3 versus Tricky, but uh, It's Tricky as a song is not in the game? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Still two. Still, Still tricky. I wow. Guess. Remember when that started as like, I think it started as like the Canadian version of SSX or something, like a re-release? Oh, really? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Hmm. Anyways, uh, email of the week, what do you guys like? There were a lot of good ones. There were a I lot like of good ones. like the casting one. Uh, Leo, casting do you have any more good. suggestions for casting? Oh, I'll see if there are any here. I also, I, I, I like, listen to those all day. I like the like unfulfilled sequels one, too. Mm. I yeah. yeah, yeah, I like that one. Um, I actually like the auto chess one. I do, too. I like the most fleshed out backstory. 
Oh, yeah. I, I have those. Uh, I'm leaning fleshed out backstory. I'm yeah. partial to the auto chess one, but I, I'll lose, and I'm okay with that. Um, I like the game not a D3. It's a little simple. Um, the you know patch in enhancements for next gen version. I think is an interesting talker. I think we'll get a lot of entries on that backstory one. So yeah, for next week. Okay, yeah. story. All right, that's Mr. Hardy of Seattle. He writes in a lot. He's got a weird. Hello, structure it's, for writing it's in, me, but... Mr. Hardy of Seattle. Whoa, Woody, whoa! <laughs> Howdy, I'm gonna go visit what? the Space Needle. <laughs> you know, Mr. Hardy from Seattle, Dan. Oh, right. hang on, I got this. You guys, uh, vamp. Okay. okay. Um, uh, Jason Siegel for Ben Reeves. So what's this, what's this Harry Potter drama? Between? Oh, I was just arguing... Uh, Dan's argument was that the story doesn't matter in the mobile game at it all. It wasn't that it doesn't matter. Mm, it was that it's, tape. It was that it's not, it's not the central... You're not reading a book. I've read the Harry it's Potter okay books. It's okay because it's a cynical cash grab that dismisses important <laughs> yeah. elements of the Harry Potter. Were, I'm confused yes. about the lore elements uh, of the mobile game. Uh, and Dan okay. said, I'm stupid. I didn't that. say uh, that. I said, All some... right, everybody. Look, <laughs> Seattle's been giving it to We can stop. Congratulations, Mr. Hardy in Seattle overall. Uh, Podcastinginformer.com for all emails in the future. Send us some real whoppers, including who you think the character with the most fleshed out, fleshed out backstory of all time is. I'd love to see you top Big Boss. That's a challenge, everybody. Yeah, maybe Leisure Big Boss is a top, for sure. Yeah. Mm. Could probably mm. do a lot with them. That's good. Uh, okay, coming up next week for this podcast feed, hopefully, unless it falls through, we have Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah, uh, I think probably Wednesday for that. I'm thinking we'll see, um, Leo. But okay. Okay. Next week. Okay. okay, next week for sure. And then also Tuesday next week, we have the cover story launching, which should Ooh. be very exciting. Dan? I'm excited for this Without one. citing anything in particular. I didn't say anything. Will you talk about this game with us? Sure. Great. And next week's episode of the Game Informer Show podcast? Sounds good. Great. If you like the show, uh, please tell a friend. And it, just so everybody knows, like the live format, just to comment on it a little bit. Like, here's my feelings about it, right? This was out of necessity this time. I like it as a tool we can use if there is like a scheduling nightmare where like we can go live Thursday. But I don't like listening to podcasts that are recorded live. Like listening as a mainly audio listener, I don't like acknowledging the live aspect of it. So if you're one of those listeners like me, I apologize, but let us know. I'd love to have your feedback for overall live format. Dan, you like it. I like the live format. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I think it's really cool to interact with people in real time, like where they can say, hey, you look like this guy. For right. The, you know? Right. Yeah. I just, those I just, are usually negative, so <laughs> I like it when they're positive. Yeah, that's true. Thanks for filtering everything, Leo. All right, and that's it for this episode of the Game Informer Show podcast. Right, Leo? Am I safe to wrap up? Do it. All right. Uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you next Thursday. We love you. We'll see you then. Bye. <laughs>